And we were muted. All right, well, hey, hey guys. Hey, hey, all right. First little, try. Little bit of a long intro there. First try. Well, we, so we, we tricked you. We'll give you a little <laughs> trick. So we were silent. Hey, guys. Welcome. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Hey. I thought today would be a listen. We had a, we had a little... We got in a little trouble with the chip community, the people who like chips. Yeah, We don't like chips that much. I feel like that was unfairly stated. Like, we like chips. It's just not our preferred go-to snack. Right. Exactly. Which is why today we're going to try Lay's Spicy Crayfish. You know I'm allergic to shellfish. Fuck! Right? I <laughs> Hold on, let me read and make sure Who that there's no- Who wants to see a murder live? Let me, let me make sure there's no actual crayfish. Oh wait, it's all in Chinese. <laughs> so I guess I'll be trying this. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> it smells like a, like a, like a friggin Cajun place. Okay. Like, like a, like a- Right, like, like, a, good, like a good old down south. <laughs> well, this might surprise you. Yeah. These are pretty terrible. <laughs> well, I tried to kill Will. It didn't work. They taste exactly like like a lobster, like crayfish. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's a good thing I had not Yeah, no. Had you would probably die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spicy crayfish flavoring. That doesn't mean actual crayfish. Well, it might. Crustaceans. You know. Including crustaceans, fish. Yeah, milk. that's that's the specific shellfish I'm allergic to. Mm. All right, don't so. don't kiss me then. Okay, I'll try not to. It's very flavorful. <laughs> okay, it's overwhelming. I once had like a steak that was marinated in something that was like that had like shrimp in like the marinade, mm -hmm. and like that set off my allergy. So All right, well, don't kiss me. Yeah. Wait, isn't it crawfish? Is it crawfish? Well, yeah, it says crawfish on the back. Crayfish. Crayfish. Same thing. Is that different? I thought they were... No, they're, they're a little... Herb in the chat says, there. wait, isn't it crawfish? It says crayfish. I don't know if there's a difference. Oh, all right. Crayfish. I'm not a marine biologist. The difference between crayfish and crawfish. <laughs> okay. Apparently it's different. <laughs> These are uh, from these are from a local, like, uh, Korean supermarket. Yeah. But it looks like it's in Chinese. The two names came in different times, and those are coined by two different scientists. This, I don't want to say it's bad because it kind of just tastes exactly like, like that Cajun spice like flavor right. in like a seafood jambalaya. Right, it's basically the same thing. Crayfish is French, crawfish is American. Crawfish is American. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are Chinese, so they 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 didn't want they 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 went with the actual pronunciation, I guess. <laughs> anyway, today, uh, besides trying to kill Will, which we failed at, we're volume, gonna try one. <laughs> we're gonna uh, go through a bunch of stuff that happened at CES last week. Yes, uh, there was a bunch of there's a lot of cool tech stuff, not a yes. whole lot of video game stuff, but I think there was actually. I'd say that there was. It, it's just not a lot of console stuff, but right. Uh, there's a lot of we got controllers. Mm -hmm. We got a uh, uh, PlayStation was there pretty pretty heavily, which I'm surprised by. We got some cool monitors, and we got uh, all the Intel and and uh, and Nvidia stuff. Yeah, I, honestly, I I gotta say it's it's a lot of little information that that will be exciting in the future. Yeah. <laughs> we also got a lot of weird wacky shit, which yeah. I saved for the very end. Yeah, CES is known for like weird wacky. Yeah tech that you know you're probably never going to use that, that's mostly what what i see when i see the yeah. articles that pop up but before we get into that we'll say thank you to ljwvu for the 18 months hi wolf bros hope all is well all is good uh jeffrey sorens thanks for the 22 months with the prime sub and fried biscuits thanks for the raid oh oh thank you thank you thank you very much fried biscuits how you doing good to see you uh we're probably gonna play valorant later fried biscuits is a new new uh new um what do you call it? Season? Okay. I don't know. So there's a you can rank in Valorant. You know, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. you get a rank. Yeah. For how well you're playing, and yes. it resets every couple, every like month or two, every like two or three months. I want to say okay. it like resets. All right. So you can re-rank. Okay. And tonight, I think at the end of the live stream, it will have reset. Uh, and there's a new map, I think. All right. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for the thanks for gifting us up. 
season pass kind of it's like yeah yeah the season pass re- all that shit resets anyway uh all right let's talk about the uh let's talk about the there's a guy in the chat called cheater biscuits are you are you in this were you, did you create this name to troll fried biscuits <laughs> You can be honest with us. You can be honest with us. We won't okay. be mad. We want to start off with PlayStation? Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Because I think that, like, in terms of, like, gamer-centric news, this might have been the biggest announcement. Mm-hmm. Or, like, traditional console gaming news. Sure. Um, Sony finally made an accessibility controller. <laughs> yeah, Sony was... Uh... Okay, so... Microsoft has their famous accessibility controller, which mm-hmm. is friggin' awesome. Yes. Uh, I've never gotten my hands on it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've played with it a little bit at like the Microsoft store, but yeah. I've never like actually like gotten to mess around with it. But it's very versatile and you can do a lot of shit with it. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo doesn't have one, but Hori made kind of a very close copy to yes. Microsoft's for the Nintendo Switch. I believe the Microsoft one is compatible with the Switch through Bluetooth. Through Bluetooth? Yeah. Uh, I might be wrong, but I remember... You can s- definitely get an adapter. Yeah. Got a piece of crayfish on my, oh, on my great. computer. Is House of the Death Trap. I'm, I'm uh, pulling up the other controllers here just okay. so, so we can get a little reference here. Yeah. So this is the Hori one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not pretty. No, but it's the same sort of idea as the Microsoft one. It has all of the inputs on the bottom that look like they plug in through like what, what's almost like an aux cable because yeah. it's really just you just want the on off. You, it's yeah. just binary. Uh, and then you have the Microsoft one, which is the most beautiful of all of them. Yeah, you got the so two also giant the one. Yeah, you got the two giant pads. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, at the top, you have all of the inputs mm-hmm. and they're labeled beautifully. Uh, and then it comes with, you need to get like the accessory pack yeah. to get all of the, here it is, to, to get all the cool buttons and stuff. Uh, you, you got, you got big buttons, little buttons, you got a foot pedal. There's more too. There's like joysticks and shit. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't show everything. I mean, the, the downside though to that is that, you know, the, the controller on itself is pretty expensive. And then you have to add all the accessories, which just keeps adding up to the price. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, for, so, sure, for sure. And you might not want all of the accessories. You might right. just want a couple because yeah. this is designed to cater to whatever disability. It does work in tandem with a regular controller. So you can like True. use a regular Xbox controller and that at the same time. Yeah, it has USB on the side. You could just yeah. straight up plug in a, a, a controller. Or and, even wirelessly. Or that. Yeah. Uh, and now, um, PlayStation. Yes, has joined finally at CES. Uh, we are we announced the next step in our journey to make gaming more accessible. Project Leonardo for the PlayStation Five, developed with key contrib- contributions from accessibility experts, community members, and game developers. Project Leonardo is our code name for a new for a new highly customizable controller kit that works outside of the box to help many players with disabilities play more games easily, more comfortably, and for longer periods. Through conversations with accessibility experts, including organizations like Able Gamers, Special Effect, and StackUp, we've designed a highly configurable controller that works in tandem with many third-party accessibility accessories and integrates with the the PS5 console to open up new ways of gaming. It is built to address common challenges faced by many players with limited motor control, including difficulty holding a controller for long periods, accurately pressing small clusters of buttons, or triggers, or positioning thumbs and fingers optimally on a standard controller. Key features. Highly customizable play experience. Uh, Hardware customization. Project Leonardo is a canvas for gamers to craft their own play experience. includes a robust kit of swappable components, including a variety of analog stick caps and buttons in different shapes and sizes. Players can use these components to craft a wide array of controller layouts, uh, and the distance of anal- and the distance of the analog stick from the gamepad can be adjusted to suit the player's preference. These components allow players to find a configuration that works for their strength, strength, range of motion, and particular physical needs. So, so I'm uh, okay. So the 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 Xbox One only has like two big buttons on it. Right. The Hori One has every button on it. Right. And and the Hori One is configured in a way that. <clears throat> is almost like a fight pad. Yes. Uh, the PlayStation One 
is is, is a wacky. <laughs> it's, it's a, a wacky one. It's Looks, a big circle. As Simon says, it's a yeah, it, yeah. It's basically that the electronic game Simon, and but like, you can move all those buttons around. Mm-hmm. So like the outside ring is all your buttons X uh, X triangle square circle whatever, and the the trigger buttons. But you like you can like move those into different positions. Yeah, but only within the circle. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you see the center button. Of the yeah. one picture is circle, so you can make the center button also whatever you want. Oh yeah, here's L one. Yeah, here's L one, and that's a circle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so does it come with two? Yeah, it looks like it comes with two big pads. Well, I I don't know. I don't think they go into it. Well, okay. So I I, I yeah. Th- later there's a there's it looks like configuration options. You get you can have yeah. one big circle thing with a little joy thingy. You can have a controller working in tandem with the big circle thingy. You could have two big circle thingies, or you could have two big circle thingies and a controller. Well, here's how they word it. Project Leonardo can be used as a standalone controller or paired with another Project Leonardo, or uh, a DualSense wireless controller. Uh, up to two Project Leonardo controllers and one DualSense wireless controller can be used together as a single virtual unit, allowing players to mix and match devices to fit their particular gameplay needs or to play collaboratively with others. So to me, that makes it sound, if they're saying you can connect two Project Leonardos together, mm-hmm. to me, that means they're sold individually. Right, you're right. You're, you're right about yeah. that. That... All right, how much? How much are we, are we <laughs> talking here? Because I'd imagine a lot of people are going to need more than one. Yeah. Or or one of these in conjunction with a, a DualSense controller. Yeah. I mean, it, it's still called uh, by its project name, so it doesn't have a release ah. date or a, a MSRP yet. Mm. Um, I imagine it would be pricey. It's also expandable with the 3.5 millimeter aux ports. They, they're calling them aux ports. Yes. Uh, support a variety of external switches and third-party accessories. You could probably honestly use the uh, the same Xbox, the ones. same yeah. Xbox ones. Yeah. Yeah. So this is good. It looks like it'll be configurable in a billion different ways. Yes. Uh, this in conjunction with the accessibility options in in a lot of third-party uh, PlayStation games, like yes. The Last of Us and God of War, have mm-hmm. like incredible accessibility options. Yeah. So that in conjunction with this controller, uh. Yeah, I have no excuse anymore. Not yeah, to play, not to play games. <laughs> um, will it make me cracked at Fortnite? I, I'm super interested in these types of controllers because I want to n- know how you can like use these things to kind of abuse the system. <laughs> like, there's got to be ways to use like an accessibility controller to like, I don't know, like get an extra button that makes it so you can like i don't know spam inputs in different well, ways i mean theoretically if you think about it in terms of like fighting games i'm sure like at least project leonardo if you use the two of them together you can map uh one button to like multiple inputs yeah so you can have like you know say if you're playing street fighter you can have punch on both keypads yeah that so is just... that is a in one of the giant uh, legal documents that says what is legal for tournaments. Yeah. Uh, you cannot have a button that is mapped f- to Multiple. more than one in yeah. more than one button, basically. Right. Um, which is a little weird because there's games that have buttons that do the same, th- like multiple right. buttons that do one thing. Right. But uh, yeah, you couldn't do something like that in a tournament, so that would be uh, yeah. exploiting. Also, it's if if you do find a way to use one of these controllers to kind of game the system in a competitive game, it's kind of like an ethical issue because you don't want these controllers to be banned because it's you know right. some people need them. Yeah, well, I'm so sure you don't want to screw people over by finding an exploit. Well, like I think so. You can, um, not in addition to button remapping, there's profiles, okay. so you can save up to three different profiles on the controller itself. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there would have to be like a tournament specific profile that you would have to use if you're using an accessibility controller. So if you're going to do something like that, there needs to be uh, so I thought about this, thought very hard. Okay. About it. If you're going to do something like that, there needs to be a tell 
a visual tell on the controller itself. Like the controller needs to be in like tournament mode and right. show everybody that we're locked in tournament mode. There's no possible way the guy using me, the controller, mm -hmm. can have multiple inputs or exploit in some way. Well, I mean, there's there's big buttons that clearly say what, what everything does. Right. So they would just have to make sure the right decal is on the right button. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, I've always wanted to get my hands on one of these accessibility right. controls. I don't know if I'm going to get my hands on one of these. Uh, I need like a good idea that would that would help. Right. Um, but anyway, it's good that they're getting into the game. I fear that the price is going to be insane because the yeah. Xbox one, just the base part is $100. Yeah. Uh, the Hori one, I think, is very similarly priced. And PlayStation has been charging out the ass for a lot of stuff. Yes. Uh, and especially because it looks like for the optimal experience, you'll, you'll want two of them. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if this does, if this costs more than a DualSense does, which is already pretty expensive, then I think they're going to have a hard time, yeah. like, you know, moving these units to the people who would need them. Well, I, I think that these are going to be very hard to come by. I yeah. think that they're not going to make that many of them. They're going to be in high demand because... Yeah there's a lot of people who needed the xbox accessibility controllers mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of xbox users yeah <laughs> there's a lot more playstation users mm -hmm. you know so I, I i don't i'm i'm i don't think they're gonna fulfill i think these are gonna be out that once they right. come out you're not gonna be able to get one for, for yeah, a bit yeah. even the freaking uh side panels for the playstation 5 those you still can't really yeah. get those so this is this is gonna be rough uh if I had to put a price on it, I would say 130 mm. for one with no extra accessories. Yeah, it feels realistic, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I don't like that, but... Uh, Hypersensini? Thanks for the 10 months. Hey, look at that. I didn't renew my Prime sub. Here it is. Well, thanks. You Thank did, you. and there it is. Uh, okay, now that's it for PlayStation? Do we want to talk about the car or do we want to save that? Uh, is that part of CES? I feel like it that, didn't happen. That, no, that was part of CES. Did it actually was, happen? That was the Sony and Honda collaboration for the, the new electric car that they're working on together. Let's talk about it now. All Might right. Well, while we're talking about PlayStation. We'll talk about the PlayStation car. Where'd you put it? I just copied and pasted it right under it. Okay. The thing. For, for timestamp reasons. Yeah. Wow, what a cool car. <laughs> It was announced earlier this year that Sony and Honda, two brands that need no introduction, are teaming to produce electric vehicles. Now the company formed a partnership called the Sony Honda Mobility um, and has announced it, to, um, it will reveal its first project at CES 2023. Uh, what does it say? There are even... Oh, this is this is before... This article came, was before the reveal. God damn it. Yeah, that's why I thought it didn't happen. All right. I, th I thought this was like a rumor... And then it didn't end up happening. Oh, I'll see if I can find the. Oh, okay. It's uh, called the Afila. 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 Yeah. Who's who? There's got to be like a firm that's in charge of tech names, <laughs> and they should be reprimanded severely. Yeah. Uh, here, CNN at the presentation during the Consumer Electronics Show, Sony Honda Mobility Chief Executive um, Yashude. Uh, Mizuno revealed a prototype of the cars, the company's first car, which looked like a mid-sized sedan, but he revealed little detail about it. The car will be available to order and even purchase in 2025, but the first deliveries of the car will not take place in North America until 2026. Oh the car God. will be built at one of Honda's factories. Uh, the car will have safety and driver assistance systems from Honda, along with entertainment and interactive features from Sony. Uh, when developing the car, the emphasis has been on software and user interface technology as much as driving dynamics and performance. Uh, running above the car's front bumper is a narrow exterior display screen. The company calls the media bar, like the PS3 cross media bar. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're wow. Uh, it will allow the vehicle to show information and interact with people outside the vehicle. Inside, the company is working with Unreal Engine graphics technology from Epic <laughs> Games. Uh, the company behind Fortnite to produce interfaces for the vehicle. Unreal's technology oh, uh, has been used by other auto brands, including General Motors, which use the technology in their Hummer EV. The car will come with a wealth of entertainment options as well. Uh, okay. What, what, okay, hold on. Pause. Uh, 
using Unreal Engine and the way they worded that sounded like they were getting help from Epic Games, but they're just going to end up using Unreal Engine. They're using Unreal Engine for the GUI of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Which, so? Like, it's like, like, that feels like a waste of the Unreal Engine. Yeah, it's a UI. Yeah. That, 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 also, <coughs> you. So it sounds like Honda needs so car companies notoriously have horrible uis yeah yeah every freaking car navigation system i've ever used has been trash yeah tesla has been pretty good with the one time i drove a tesla it was pretty good i feel like that's because tesla is more of a more, software yeah. company than they are like a car company it still know? wasn't great because there's no. some weird no. shit like i sat in the car for like 10 minutes how do i turn the wipers on you know <laughs> like there's all this weird yeah. shit i mean that i couldn't figure out say what you will about apple carplay and google auto whatever Google's version of it is like those are good. Those are great. Those are much better. When I get in a car, I gotta plug my phone in because I don't want to yeah. see the car's version yeah, of it because no, it's always not. bad. Uh, so partnering with a tech company to make your UI is a smart idea. Yes. But has Sony ever been good at UIs? Cap. Uh, that's how pissed I am. <laughs> Cameras UIs. Not, not good. good. The uh, the the PS the, the PlayStation you like main UIs they've really just not been one great. long bar. Yeah, and, and the... that's not good. No, no, no. I haven't been happy with Sony's UIs. Their games they make good UIs in their games. Yeah. Are you gonna have Sony Interactive Entertainment make your fucking car UI? Can you imagine Naughty Dog making the car UI. It would be it would, phenomenal. It would be if phenomenal. They got Naughty Dog, to but do it would that. also be like depressing and just make you want to kill your passenger. Yeah. <laughs> Using Unreal, the, the the way they talked about Unreal Engine, it sounded like they were partnering with them, but no, they're just going to use Unreal yeah. Engine. And that's just going to be part of like, uh, the way I think of that is like in a Tesla, when you're driving around, it creates like a real world map of like the cars around. Yeah, it'll look stuff. it'll look nice. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Tesla version is like really rudimentary. It's like, yeah. it's like shapes and stuff, yeah. which is fine. But uh, having like an AI version that like recreates the shit around you would be yeah. pretty cool. But uh, I want to be able to navigate all of my features in like yeah. an easy way. I don't want to have to futz around <laughs> while I'm trying to drive. You know, that's the most frustrating yeah. thing. Is the uh, the most notorious example of this that we have is uh, is it mom's current Jeep? Because the 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 one where whenever you type something, it might have been the last one when you type in uh, uh when, when you use the car's navigation to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. It keeps warning you that there's a better route. Yes. And you say no. Yes. And every minute it just keeps yes. coming up. Yes. It does not and stop. And there's hit, no way around it. Even if you hit yes, it still routes you to the same route you're on. And, but it if you hit yes, it'll still keep popping up yes. over and over yeah. again. Yeah. And it's a major distraction. Yes. And should probably be a recall. Yeah. That's or not a okay. firmware update. <laughs> yeah. It could cause an accident. Not to mention like the fact that on you know the built-in Jeep. GPS is it the you can't just type in the address. You have to go first. You have to make sure you're in the right state because if it's long road trips, forget. And then you have to then you have to like go by address and then by city. You can't just do it all in one shot. Yeah, it's there's awful. a lot. Yeah, there's a there's a lot that car companies need to be brought into the 21st century. And I'm glad yeah. that there's tech companies that are entering the market to kind of show them how to do things. Yeah. But uh. And so I don't, I think that this is a good idea. I just don't know if Sony's the guys, you know? I mean, is this the car, by the way? Is this, is this, the, or is that just a random car? That's the car. That's the car? That's the car. Why is there one picture of the car on CNN business? <laughs> That's like the whole thing. Because they're a business. The CNN business. They want to get to the business of it. They don't want time to show you all the fancy bells and whistles. This looks like uh, the Ionic 5, the, the, the Hyundai yes car um all right so they didn't specify whether or not there'd be playstation 5 capability in it but i'm pretty sure there's gonna be some sort of playstation 5 capability in it like what they're, they're like like streaming maybe. you can play cuphead in your tesla so there's they've, yeah. they've got to like compete on some level with that you know so. what's a weird sort of conspiracy in all of the tesla marketing where they show all of the games that you can play yeah. there's always the witcher 3 okay even though I think on the Tesla website it says Witcher Three, right? That is it doesn't exist. You can't play the Witcher Three. There's okay. it's not doesn't exist yeah, in the yeah. Tesla. You cannot 
do it. Right. So I don't know. It's like a weird sort of like yeah. mismarketing or conspiracy. So I don't know. Uh, I I I don't know what. Again, PlayStation kind of doesn't have great functionality outside of the PlayStation. Right. They're getting into remote play. And I think by 2026, when this freaking car comes out, that might be a thing. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, maybe you'll be able to plug in your PlayStation 5 Pro <laughs> yeah. into it. But Or at least just sync up a controller so you can like futz around, like have your kids in the backseat do something so they don't That's bother true. you. That's true. But then it would have like... What would the the games? What would they be? Android based games? Like, a, like they can't. It can't be a PlayStation freaking uh, uh, platform. Why not? Like, because that's you know, because like they, it has to be like a. What is it going to be like a Vita TV? It's got it like like it has to be like a like a like a platform that's on the market if they're going to call it PlayStation. Well, I think I think the problem is if they do like cloud streaming, mm-hmm. you know. What if you're if you're driving in a in an area that doesn't have reception mm-hmm. or like bad reception, you're not gonna be able to play the game. So it's got to be something built into the car so you can play games natively in the car. Yeah, but so you know maybe it won't be PlayStation Five. Maybe it'll be PlayStation Four, and maybe we'll just have to live with that. <laughs> but because like, what are they gonna say? Like God of War Seven available now on PlayStation Six and PlayStation Honda, Hon- yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and that's all PlayStation had, right? Uh, yeah. Let's. I think the next biggest news is probably from Nvidia. Yeah. Uh, this is they have. So this. Last couple of months, I think it was like October, November, they Nvidia unveiled their 40 series cards, which yeah. is the new big thing. Uh, they are asking an astronomical amount for these for the 4090, the, mm-hmm. the highest end of them. Uh, they now have a uh, 4090 Mobile Edition, okay, and the 4070 Ti. The Ti version of these cards is like a slight spec bump. But everybody pretty much unanimously agrees that the 4070 Ti is basically a 4080 just resold. Right. So I guess like a rebranding to like shave some money off, which is weird because it's a few months later. And also, did they ever even sell the 4080? I don't remember I, I seeing think, it. I think they skipped to the, well, they didn't skip to the 4090, but like they, the 4090 was the first one to, to launch. Mm-hmm. They were like, this is you buy this, yeah. You know, and then they said later we'll we'll start selling the forty seventy and the forty eighty. Yeah. I'm I'm looking up if I can I even fucking buy a forty eighty. I don't know, man. Like this is why I'm not a PC gamer. All these numbers confuse the shit out of me. You can buy a forty eighty. Oh, yeah. here it is from B and H for fourteen hundred dollars, which is a little less than my computer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dad says maps and they played spot, spot a car bingo. Oh, there's a too much useless tech in cars today. In 1953, your grandmother drove from New York to Florida in his 51. Your grandfather drove from New York to Florida in his 51 Plymouth using a using gas station maps and they played spot a car bingo. Yeah, it's, life sucked back in then. <laughs> yeah, life sucked back yeah. then. Now you have. Now you have. Now, here's a, here's a little fun little 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 dad <laughs> issue. Yeah. Every time I gotta go somewhere, he's like, "Do you know how to get there?" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but I'm just gonna type it in my phone. Yeah. And then he will tell me how to get there anyway, mm-hmm. and I, my eyes just glass over because I'm like, I'm just gonna type it Speaking in. Speaking <laughs> of glassing over eyes. You know, our father can't see out of one sure. eye. You know what else they didn't have in the 1951 Plymouth? All the warning sensors that tell you <laughs> when you're going to hit another car. Oh, my God. Father. Father. Okay, anyway, NVIDIA. Yay. Uh, we got four, 4070 Ti. Basically, just after they announced the 4090 and after the 4080 just came out. Yeah. Like, it must have been like a month or two ago. Um. We have the 4070 Ti, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll read part of this article. Oh, and, and the 4090 Mobile Edition, which is good because yes. you'll probably see that in laptops and stuff. Uh, NVIDIA's CES 2023 presentation, this is from Digital Trends, has wrapped 
Uh, and we finally have all the announcements from Team Green. NVIDIA is bringing new GPUs to desktop and mobile. A slate of new games is receiving DLSS 3. Remember that? Yes. And GeForce Now is finally getting an upgrade to NVIDIA's RTX 40 series GPUs. Let's just go right to the... Uh, well, I guess we should do RTX 40 series mobile because that might be relevant in some like portable handhelds eventually. Yes. It was inevitable that NVIDIA would release mobile graphics cards at some point, but we didn't expect a GPU as monstrous as the, for, as the RTX 4090 to show up in laptops. NVIDIA is bringing its whole range of mobile, including the RTX 4090, and the first machines will start receiving as soon as February. That's very soon. Yeah. We'll undoubtedly see specific models carrying these cards through throughout CES. During the presentation, NVIDIA showed off the Alienware X16 with the RTX 4090, but we expect dozens of machines throughout the show. And then here's the 4070 Ti for a desktop. In a surprise to no one, NVIDIA introduced its uh, reintroduced its ill-fated 12 gigabyte RTX 4080 as the RTX 4070 Ti. Now I read a little bit of this article before and I don't mm-hmm. I don't understand what ill-fated means. Generally um generally means it had a bad time. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Or like like, I, like I, I know what it means. Yeah. What is what does he in mean? In the context I want to know what happened to the 12 gigabyte 4080. Did it not come out? I'm uh, cuz again, I'm yeah. confused by all um this. October 2022, NVIDIA took the radical step of unlaunching the 4080. (laughs) The GPU was announced alongside a 16 gig uh, version and the 4090, and many people accused NVIDIA of giving lower class GPU a named upgrade to justify its higher price. Yeah, I remember because I think the 4080 came out in two versions. There was a 12 gigabyte and I think the 16 gigabyte. Yeah, this is the 12 gigabyte. And that seemed ridiculous because the 80, the, the 80 version it was like the mid range that like people ended up getting the 90 was a little ridiculous yeah. in the seventies. Uh, pe- people just usually go for the middle. Yeah. Uh, having two versions of the eighties was very strange. Yeah. Uh, so I guess they axed the 12 gigabyte and here it is again, it's, Man. but they're calling it the 47 TI. Uh, that's why it's coming so soon because they were going to make it anyway. They were just going to call it something different. That makes a lot more sense. The TI version of of the cards is usually like the mid-cycle refresh, yeah. as far as I know. Uh, the name and price are the only things different this time around. The NVIDIA, with NVIDIA knocking it down from $900 to a more reasonable $800. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> the specs remain the same, including 12 gigabytes of DDR6X memory, despite the fact that NVIDIA never mentioned that this product had already been announced. <laughs> For performance, the card looks like it will match last gen's RTX 3090 Ti, which is crazy, which is no small feat for an $800 GPU. It also supports NVIDIA's RTX 40 series features like shader execution reordering and DLSS 3. We won't have to wait long to see how it performs against uh, current gen options as the GPU is releasing on January 5th. So five days ago, it's already out. That's crazy. Uh, so there you go. If you need a new GPU, now I have been using a 3060 Ti okay. in my uh, rig in the other room, and I have never been like I need a little more. <laughs> 3060 Ti is like the low end, yeah, of the last gen, and it's fine. I, I'm getting, I'm playing Valorant. Valorant's like the game that I play the most on PC. Yeah, 4K. Almost 300 frames a second. Okay. My monitor is only 144 frames a second, but I'm getting around like 250 to 300 frames okay. a second. So I never need any more than that. Now, is Valorant one of those types of games that, you know, has... I don't it's know. very heavily optimized. Okay. It, 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 it could run on some pretty low specs. I, well, I was trying to think of like games that are usually used to benchmark PCs in terms of graphics. Like I know people usually use like... Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Doom Eternal. Um, I forgot like one of the other popular they ones They never use Valorant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's uh, not very graphic. It's a very pretty game. It's not very graphically impressive because it's cartoony looking. Yeah. Uh, and uh, those other games that you're mentioning have like nice like lighting effects lighting and stuff. Lighting detail. And, and also uh, 
some of the, a lot of, like remember when crisis was like a big deal yeah. everybody was like can i run crisis that was because crisis was very poorly optimized yeah. it wasn't a, a spectacularly pretty game yeah it was like good oh, looking. Was, you're very good looking yeah but the whole reason why you needed a supercomputer to run the game was because it was made poorly yeah <laughs> and there are games like that that people still use the benchmark yeah um call of duty is uh, i think a good example of a game that is optimized not i don't want to say as poorly as something like crisis was mm. but warzone definitely was not optimized at all yeah. now it's a little better but uh the last gen uh, Warzone was pretty bad. Well, so. I'm wondering how well your computer will do with something like Doom Eternal at full spec. Do you think it would buckle, or do you think you can get some decent mileage out of it? Uh, I don't think I would be able to get 4K okay. out of it, for sure. I, I had a problem streaming and playing Sonic Forces. <laughs> Frontiers. <laughs> Frontiers, fuck. Um, yeah, but luckily, I don't really do much of that. Yeah. I mean, streaming and playing Valorant is a little rough. But uh, most people don't play games of 4K, yeah. you know? So, again, I haven't uh, had a problem. Had, had I want to play Doom Eternal at full 4K, 144 hertz, maybe that's a problem. Right. But, again, I haven't had to do that yet. Uh, where was I? For performance, the card looks like it'll be last year's 3090. We want... Oh, yeah, okay. So, it's here. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's the whole article. We got it. Our uh, dad wants us to go to CES next year so we can stay in Las Vegas at the hotel and get the, the Blue Wire studio and all that. He wrote that he wanted a net jet, and I got scared because I looked real quick and I thought it said NFT jet, and I almost <laughs> like started yelling at him for getting into scams. <laughs> I think he wants to go to the porn expo because every year CES is the same, same time, time as, as the porn expo. And they're usually across the street from it's each other. It's usually very close. Yeah. And that is not a coincidence no they know no 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 <laughs> hey it, it is because of porn that we have a lot of technology a lot of technology. a lot of things vhs won the format war because of porn blu-ray uh eventually won the format war because of porn it's the so. only thing keeping vr afloat yes <laughs> uh anyway here's a wacky from ces Lenovo's dual screen laptop. I saw this and I'm still trying to figure out like how how can you how do you configure that to work properly? I I don't know how you can flip it cuz cuz here in this image there's they're showing a top like like it's like a book. Yeah. But here it ha it's like a sideways book and the top is a monitor and the bottom is a monitor, but then they flip it and the left is the monitor and the right is the monitor. So like, how does the orientation work? I don't know. I th see, I thought the keyboard was attached. Apparently it's not. That's what was tripping me. No, up. there's a lot of weird shit going. I think you yeah. can put the keyboard on top of one of the screens. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Lenovo, the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i is making quite a splash here at CES 2023. And it's pretty easy to see why. The innovative laptop is the first full-size dual-screen monitor OLED device. OLED, that's interesting. On the market, and at first glance, it absolutely seems like the kind of device that was de destined for CES awards, but with a little real-world functionality that you couldn't get with the best two-in-one laptops already. But. But. Having played around with the device myself, I can tell you right now that like the various Asus ZenBook Duo laptops on the market, there are some very practical innovations here that make it more than just a flashy business wristwatch showpiece meant to impress visually while not offering as much substance as the price tag implies. I'm looking at you, Lenovo ThinBook X1 Fold Gen 1. Okay, <laughs> that's like an in-tech joke I don't understand. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Uh, Lenovo YogaBook 9i is expected to be available globally, though we don't have a pre precise release schedule yet. It will start rolling out in June 2023 for a starting price of $2,999, no, $2, yeah. which is really not that bad. Uh, I mean, it is pricey for a laptop, but for a laptop like this? For a laptop with two monitors. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's got two screens on it. This definitely puts it into a more premium category, but given the specs, this is a more premium device for sure. It's hard to compare 
it to anything else since there aren't a whole lot of laptops like it. But given the price uh, of a lot of out of left field devices like this with uncertain markets, it's about what we would expect for a device of its kind. Yeah. What the fuck is that? Oh, that is that's the, the keyboard. keyboard. Yeah. I was like, why is the screen a triangle now? <laughs> that's, that's just what yeah. holds it up. The dual 13.3 inch OLED display looks amazing. Uh, think thanks to their 2.8 K 16 by 10 DCI P3 hundred percent panels. Now DCI P3 100%. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> uh, which can get as bright as 400 nits. Okay. The sound bar in the middle hinge also puts out some seriously respectable audio. That's pretty cool that the sound bar is in the hinge. Yeah, that's like directly into your face then. Yeah, and right in the middle yeah. at all times. Uh, except then you can't get a left and right stereo if it's straight up like in book form. Yeah. Uh, and as always, Lenovo has incorporated a physical privacy shutter into its webcam, which is still something Lenovo's competitors are catching up on even in 2023. That's true. A lot of computers still don't have privacy shutters. I was trying to, I was always saying that like, you know how when you use a webcam, the light turns on? Yeah. Like when you're using it, the, the little light that's there that yeah. turns on. I was, I was under the impression the camera cannot turn on if the light doesn't turn on. Like the light is, powered is part of the wiring as far as i know that's not entirely true because it's still all powered by software and software can be reprogrammed so i think apple ones you cannot turn the camera on without turning on the light right but the light is in the in the power chain, the light is before the camera, mm -hmm. so you have to power the light before you power the camera. But I think on the some Logitech ones, it's separate. Yeah. So like it depends on the type of cam, which should be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> or just like put a little shutter thing there. Or just easy. let them see. I don't care. Come <laughs> watch. I'm not doing anything exciting. Yeah. Um. And if I am, maybe maybe that'd be cool. Maybe I want you to see. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. So that's basically it. It's it's a it's a dual screen monitor, and there there's a picture of it right here with the the keyboard just sitting on top, which uh, yeah. with uh, hopefully it's got like a felt bottom. Uh, so I yeah I think two thousand dollars is really not that bad for a for a dual screen laptop like that. Uh, now we got another controller. By another computer company. By Asus. 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 Uh, I, I don't know if I can say Asus for a whole article. <laughs> Asus's new uh, Xbox controller has a tiny customizable OLED screen. This does look just like a regular old Xbox yeah. controller. Except with a terrible font on the, on the <laughs> buttons. Uh, and it has a friggin' straight up like bicolor LCD screen yeah. like sitting on top. Uh Asus's fondness for sticking small screens on devices now extends for to game pads as part of its many uh gaming hardware introductions at CES. The company has unveiled a ROG Raykiri Pro controller with a built-in customizable OLED screen, the 1.3-inch display on the Xbox and Windows ready peripheral can show useful information like the charging status, microphone mute, and the activity profile, but you can also use it for purely cosmetic animations, images, and text. No one will forget that it's your controller then. This is also the first licensed Xbox controller to offer tri-mode uh, connections. You can use Bluetooth, RF, or USB-C. You'll only get to use the wireless functionality with a PC, What's the fucking point then? Uh, Asus promises. Well, Asus only promises Xbox support through USB, but it's still handy if you like flexibility in how you connect to your gaming machines. Yeah. So that's because uh, there is no third-party wireless Xbox yeah. controller that uses 
Xbox is wireless. The Rock Band controllers. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, because Microsoft has a weird sort of like I don't know proprietary license. It's supposed to like reduce latency. Yeah. With which I think it does, but at the same time, like Sony uses Bluetooth, Nintendo uses Bluetooth. Just come on, man. Do you think they're not licensing it out, or do you think it's just prohibitively expensive to license? It might be both. Uh, so you can use Bluetooth, RF, or USB C. So what's the RF then? It maybe comes with like a dongle. Okay. Like the like that eight bit do controller. Yeah, but that's the two point four gigahertz connection. Is that RF? Technically, radio frequency. Oh, I'm thinking IR. Yeah, which would be terrible. Yes. Um. Okay, that makes sense. That's good. I I do like dongle, but I, why not have a dongle for Xbox then? I mean, they do. No, I'm, but I mean for the console itself. Yeah, yeah, they're saying it only works through USB. Yeah. But this is still handy if you're like flexibility in how you can tr connect to your gaming machines. Even the audio is slightly excessive as the Ray Kiri Pro includes an ESS DAC to boost audio from the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. So I guess that's cool if you want to plug in a gaming headset to your PC. Yeah. But I mean, I, I guess it will work for Xbox also. I don't see yeah. why it wouldn't. If you're directly plugged in the gamepad unsurprisingly offers excessive controls uh oh yeah beyond the familiar xbox layout you can program four rear buttons for hotkeys sensitivity toggles and similar commands top buttons let you switch profiles mid play and trigger locks can limit the amount of travel and app also offers control over dead zones vibrations and other finer points uh asus hasn't mentioned pricing of course this is going to be over a hundred dollars oh wow uh, yeah. But you can expect the Raikiri Pro to ship sometime in the first quarter of the year. This isn't the first controller with a display. Hello, Dreamcast fans. Or even the first with OLED. Uh, the Hyperkin uh, Xbox Duke. Remember that? Yes. Uh, however, the technology might help it stand out in a crowded field where modular designs, wild colors, and extra buttons are relatively commonplace. So... I like this idea. Uh, I can't imagine there being anything useful on that screen. No, I was going to say I would like this idea if it had a more in-game uses. Like the VMU on the Dreamcast had in-game uses. Right. Like it would show your health or, you know, a, f a map screen or your chow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there would be something that the developer would develop specifically for yeah. it, which obviously is not going to happen. Uh, but I, I will say... It's reminding me of a laptop that Asus made uh, yeah. that I saw at um, PAX West. Uh, it was a laptop where on the back of the screen it had like a like like this weird like bicolor like display that was yeah. like playing an animation. And I was like, that's freaking awesome. And I went over and I started filming it. And the guy saw me filming and he started talking to me. And I was like, can you put GIFs on here? Can you put like whatever yeah. you want? He's like, yeah, you can put whatever you want on there. And I was like, oh, how? And he was like, uh. <laughs> I don't know. So then me and the, me and the guy yeah. sat there for 20 minutes oh, geez. trying to put a GIF on there, and eventually we got it. But <laughs> there uh But yeah, it was pretty it was it was pretty cool. They have like a yeah. little like app where you can just upload a GIF and you can like putz around with it. So okay. that'll probably happen on here too. You'll probably yeah. be able to put whatever GIF you want on there. I mean, hopefully that like they open it up and like you know the community can make like essential in-game mechanics for this controller like imagine playing resident evil and your health is always just there you don't have to keep going to the pause menu yeah see. or like a mod of some sort where you can yeah. add it and, and yeah. maybe have like a community storefront where mm -hmm. you can upload the mods for it that'd be really cool uh hyper Senshini says uh i think uh xbox weird control licensing is why 8-bit do's latest products don't have the four modes uh they had on up until the pro 2 controller yeah 8-bit do's are all wired well, the last Ape Do Ultimate is really bizarre. It has it, they they like broke up the modes between yeah. two different controllers. But yeah, that's why Ape Do doesn't have uh, wireless Xbox controllers. Mm -hmm. They're they're only uh, wired. Okay. Uh, yeah, that controller is probably going to be over a hundred dollars. I'd imagine Ace has found a way to get like really cheap uh, screens. Yeah, and that's just <laughs> that's why. I mean, a one point three inch screens can't be that expensive. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
let's try to plow through the rest of this. There's okay. uh you ever hear of Samsung's big ass Odyssey display? It's an yes. ultra wide that a lot of people have. Yes. It's like a, a little over a thousand dollars. Well, they made a new one. Okay. This is Odyssey Neo G9 gaming monitor. Uh this time it is dual 4K. Okay. It's 57 inches. Uh-huh. So it's 32 by 9. Right. And it's got a refresh rate of 240 hertz. Okay. So if you're going to buy this thing, you might need one of them 4090s or whatever yeah. the hell. Uh, display point 2.1. Display port 2.1. Yes. Holy shit. Uh, where's the resolution? There it is. Uh, the Odyssey Neo G9 comes with a dual 4K resolution with a pixel count of 7,680. 7,680 by 2160. That's two 4K screens side by side. Yes. If you can't recognize the math, that's two 4K. Yeah, yeah blah, blah, blah. Samsung is billing this as an 8K monitor, but it's not true 8K. It has half the vertical resolution. You'd okay, have to that's stack, messed up. You have to stack two of them on top of each other yeah. in order for it to be true 8K. Nobody... The ones that are 1440p, nobody bills them as 4K. Yeah. So why are you billing this as 8K? That's disingenuous as all. Advertising hell. shenanigans aside, the new Odyssey Neo G9 needs DisplayPort 2.1. Uh, it runs at a 240 refresh rate, and when paired with the resolution, it needs a bandwidth of 36.19 gigabytes with HDR off and 45 gigabytes with HDR on. That's with full compression on, too. Actual data rate is much higher. So... so why display point 2.1 and not hdmi 2.1 because well, HDMI 2.1 is 48 gigabits per well second. display port a lot of monitors use display port uh because it's free they don't have to pay licensing uh, to the hdmi consortium mm-hmm. and you can get uh display port typically you can get more data out of it mm-hmm. um but the problem is 2.1 is only available uh f- on, on like very few graphics cards, it seems. Yeah, well, they say, uh, we've been talking about it for over a year and even more so after AMD announced the RTX 7900 mm-hmm. XTX and the RTX 7900 XT graphics cards would support the standard. The new Odyssey Neo G9 is the first monitor we've seen that supports DisplayPort 2.1. And that's a surprising problem. That's surprising because I'd imagine... <coughs> people who would want to rock this monitor are not going to want an AMD yeah. RX 7900. They're going to want yeah. an NVIDIA 3090 or something. Like, to be clear, it, like you can hook this up to a regular DisplayPort connection and it'll work, but you're not going to get the full the full power. Will it monitor. have a regular DisplayPort connection? Well, if you use a DisplayPort, if you use a DisplayPort 1.4 cable mm-hmm. and a DisplayPort uh, graphics card that sports display port 1.4 it'll work but you're not going to get oh right the full 4k 60 hd uh, sorry 4k like 300 frame rate you know whatever but does this monitor have anything other than a 2.1 port uh, i don't know i don't i'm not sure now there were ultra wide monitors before or there were monitors in the past mm-hmm. that needed more bandwidth than what DisplayPort 1.4 could provide, so you would need two DisplayPort 1.4 yeah. cables. So they could have just done that. It's a dual monitor; it's two right. displays. So why not just use it like it's two displays? Just have two cables. I don't know, man. Or give you the option at least. It's a little ridiculous to assume that you you you're gonna need. Uh, a, a new graphics card for this. Um, anyway, the previous standard DisplayPort 1.4 A 1.4 A only supports up to 25.92 gigabits per second. So you need DisplayPort 2.1 to drive the Odyssey Neo G9 at its full resolution and frame rate. The problem is that only AMD and Intel actually support D- DisplayPort 2.1 right now. NVIDIA's latest GPUs top out at DisplayPort 1.4a. They'll work with the Odyssey Neo G9 due to DisplayPort's backwards compatibility, but not at the full resolution or frame rate. So you're right. 
worse nvidia's gpus are the only ones powerful enough to drive the resolution and frame rate of the odyssey neo g9 they they're just hampered by the connection standard so we're both uh, both of our fears yeah both of our concerns have been answered by this article yeah for as powerful as the uh, AMD RX 7 900 is, it's nowhere near the RTX uh, 4090, even at standard 4K. Uh, it'll hover around 60 frames per second to 100 frames per second in the most demanding games. Far below the refresh rate of Samsung's new monitor. Uh, RTX 4090, by comparison, easily cracks 100 frames per second in most games at 4K and often goes higher. Uh, my, my goddamn 30, 60 Ti. <laughs> can go pretty high intel isn't even a factor in this conversation either for as impressive as the arc a770 and a750 which i have a video on on my channel are they're targeting 1080p game they're not powerful enough to drive 4k let alone dual 4k yeah the arc graphics cards i guess they have display port 2.1 which i didn't even know but uh yeah they're like 300 dollars cards yeah <laughs> so like you're not gonna get a lot out of them uh so yeah basically Samsung has a cool new monitor that you can't fucking use uh, at all. They haven't announced any other ports on it or, or price. Mm. I imagine this is going to be very expensive. Yeah, I mean, th the last one went for between a thousand and like fifteen hundred. Yeah. This might be more than that, which would be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I mean, I I love the idea of uh, ultra wide monitors. Yeah. Um, if I didn't have to stream, I might use an ultra wide monitor like all of the time because right. it's nice to not have the seam in between two monitors. It's nice to have all of that real estate. Yeah. Uh, it's just that if you're streaming, it's nice to be able to flip one monitor to the game. Yeah. Now, a lot of these monitors, and I think the older uh, Samsung Odysseys have an option to do picture by picture. Yeah. So you can show like your HDMI port, like playing a Nintendo Switch on one half of the monitor and, and have the other half be your computer. <coughs> Um, and that would be helped if you could just plug two display ports in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I I another reason why I don't like ultra wides is because they usually have lower refresh rates, and this is super high resolution and a great refresh rate. So this yeah. might fix a lot of my problems. It's just that with Display Point Two Point One, I'm never going to be able to use this right. thing. Anyway. AMD's here. They got new series cards. That's what they were talking about in that last yes. article. The new Ryzen 70 40 series laptop APUs has special AI sauce. So uh, Intel is targeting artificial intelligence with its new uh, uh, APUs. Uh, do I want to read this? I don't think so. Let's keep <laughs> let's keep rolling. Next. Because there's too much stuff. Yeah. Intel 13th gen. They've announced their 13th gen. Uh, gives us five clues about future laptops. Uh, they ha I, they're also desktop things. Right. But, uh, that they're going to do mobile stuff too. Uh, you'll likely see a quick jump to the 13th gen Intel CPUs. Uh, I think it's... Be yeah. The new laptop CPUs are supporting chipsets... Uh, they can generally drop right into the existing motherboards and have the same power and cooling requirements. It's always a faster manufacturing switch over when companies don't need to significantly redesign the hardware. So you can just straight up drop this into existing yeah. stuff. So that's pretty cool. One thing about Intel CPUs that I recently learned, because I was, what was I doing? Oh, I was looking into like, like editing rigs and how to make like a, like your, editing workflow faster right. basically with this thing you don't gotta do anything this right, is yeah. great but like uh if you want to run like a i was holding my my macbook uh if you want to run like a windows like editing machine mm -hmm. uh it helps to have certain like architecture like um so my, my camera films in like a Mac format and then right. I put it on here and everything works just awesome. Right. But Windows computers kind of have a hard time. Um, the uh, the NVIDIA graphics cards kind of work pretty good with it. But Intel and in their, in their last two generations have what's called like an iGPU, like in the processor. Yeah. And that helps with video encoding too. So that helps make 
uh, okay. video editing super fast. So the 13th gen will probably have something similar. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. However, you won't be able to take me away from editing on a MacBook. <laughs> the, 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 it, it, everything just freaking works. Yeah. Anyway, uh, weird stuff. Here's the Here fun, happy time from CES. Here we go. Let's fun, see. happy stuff from CES. This is Games Beat. Uh, scroll down to the Ella Smart Baby Stroller. Oh, boy. From Gullix, from Glux Kind Technologies. Uh, LA Power Baby Stroller with a motor, motor where properly it uses some algorithms to assist parents with their strollers. It has a self-driving capability, but not while the baby is actually in the stroller. Why that not? That only kicks in if you have to hold the baby in your arms and push the stroller at the same time. Ooh, that's good because I've had to do that multiple times. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times you've had to like hold the kid and drag a stroller with you. It's, it's not fun. You know what I'm interested in? Where are you going where you need the stroller? There, to the park. To the there, park? There's a park down the block from us. You go out? Yeah, surprisingly. <laughs> I, I've, I've never I've never seen this stroller. You've never seen this stroller? No. It's, a, it's a fancy stroller. We could put both kids on it at the I've same time. I've seen you with like the little, like the, the, the cradle part. Yeah. Like where the baby sits. We didn't bring... I'm, I'm trying to think of like, I'm sure we brought the stroller to like restaurants and stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, don't you usually just come in with a little carrier? Into the house, yeah, with a little yeah, carrier. Yeah. yeah, you just swing that around. Yeah. The baby's swinging around. Yeah, he loves Because of centrifugal force, yeah. you can <laughs> swing it all around. <laughs> anyway, so then, yeah, get the Ella. Get it. No, I don't. That, <laughs> that stroller was already very expensive. I do not. How much are strollers? They are expensive. But ours is like $1,000. Well, that's not much cheaper than the Ella, which is $3,300. $3, and think of it, it could drive for you. True. Yeah. It'll take care of your baby for you. <laughs> Next, we have BMW's D. It's a car. Oh, it, it's color. It changes color. It looks so stupid. Yeah, uh, there were some very interesting. Why is Arnold? Uh, why is Arnold Schwarzenegger in this? Oh, is he? I didn't see that. I didn't watch this video at all. He's wearing Roman gladiator. Okay, whatever. I'm just trying to skip to the parts where you see the car change color. Uh, Here it is. Uh, so, I guess. It has like moods and shit. It's, I gotta watch this video later because it looks uh, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's e ink. All the screens are e ink. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah. I kind of like that a lot. So you can make if you're feeling like you want your car to be red one day. Yeah. And then you see a cop come by, you make it white so it doesn't think so yeah. the cop doesn't think you're going fast. Uh, speaking of mood lighting, LG showed off its mood up technology for cha for changing the LED uh, door panels of a refrigerator. <laughs> That's a refrigerator? Yes. That thing's huge. The LG Mood Up refrigerator will change its colors depending on what you want. Oh, my God. Uh, it's also got Bluetooth speakers. Above that is, uh, I have a, a picture of the freaking car yeah. with like a checkerboard pattern. I, I, is What's a good use for a smart fridge? I can't think of one. I can't think of one either. I've seen ones where like they have a camera in it, so you push the button... And like the screen will show you what's in the fridge before you open it. Wood has that. Wood got a new fridge and he got that. So and like, we were all just fucking around with it. <laughs> just trying to do dumb shit with it. Yeah. The first thing we all, we sat around it for like 30 minutes trying to uh, get emulators on it. And you can. It has yeah. a Google Play Store. Okay. You can just do whatever. But we ended up not doing it. It has. It, it does show you what's inside the, 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 the fridge. And it will... Oh, he, he's in the chat. They smudge my fridge with their dirty gamer fingers. <laughs> it does show you what's in the fridge. Yeah. And it tries to learn what's in the... What everything is. Okay. So it'll tell you what's low and create like a shopping list. Yeah. Which would be really cool if it worked. <laughs> and if you didn't have to sit there and teach it. Because yeah. you have to be like, no, that's not broccoli. That's, yeah. you know, carrots. You know, you have to like train it i mean I so guess, as artificial intelligence gets better it'll yeah. probably be better at doing that i mean i guess it would be cool like for it to have like you know the weather and like you know news and the time and whatnot like a calendar maybe 
you know, like little stupid things. I do want any any phone can do. I want to get a screen for the kitchen because I'm always sitting at the counter eating. Yeah. And I just prop my phone up. But it would be nice to have like one of those Google Home like iPad things. Yeah. I I just play YouTube. I just whenever I cook or do the dishes, I just take my iPad and watch YouTube. Yeah. While I do that. I just I have an iPad just just sitting around. I got to use the iPad. iPad. I need there's there's got to be like a dock I can get for the iPad just to. Even I just use a case that has like that has like a stand built into it. Yeah, but I want it to look nice. I want it to look nice. Let's get a nice looking stand. Yeah. My iPad is bent. Uh, yeah, have you seen it? It's no, my iPad no. Pro from like, like the original 2015. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember it's, it. I haven't seen it's it. It's bent. I don't know what happened. Jeez. It's got this big bend. In I got to get a new case because like it's got a protective screen. On. I, I had to get like a hardcore case because you know, I have kids. I got to protect the thing. Mm. And like the screen protector is like I think interfering with my inputs, mm. so I gotta get it. That's why I don't like screen protectors. I didn't want it for the screen protector. I wanted it because it looked like it could take a bullet. Okay, so I understand. Anyway, hey Wood, if you're still in the chat, here's a throw out your fridge, <laughs> yeah, and get the LG, whatever the fuck this is, yeah, <laughs> or get an aroma player that adds scent to your videos. Oh God, are right, you talk about this? I think. My computer's running out of storage. Hold on. Okay. Uh, Aroma Join announces the Aroma Player, which lets creators customize their videos by adding their own scents to them. Oh, Bob, you might want to pay attention to this. After picking up a video from your own library or by using a YouTube link, you can add scents on the timeline to set up the perfect smell, timing, and duration for a scent to go along with your video. Uh, the Kyoto-based tech startup said that the scented video platform was powered by its proprietary aroma shooter technology, which can switch between various scents without any delay. Aroma Player is a web application that can be easily accessed from the Google Chrome browser. It has a few hundred kinds of scents available from coffee to orange. Coffee! I was, I was going to say farts, but yeah, coffee works too. I thought we ran out of space, but actually the stream crashed for oh. some reason, and I have no idea why. Okay. Uh, so just refresh. Tell, uh, refresh, chat. Yeah. I was not really paying attention. Uh, what it, the fuck? It, uh, you you after, can add sense to your... After picking up a video from your own library or buying or by using a YouTube link, you can add sense. You can add... Oh, so it's like a crowdsourced scent. Yes. Library. Yes. You can add smells to your videos now. Okay. So... Ha- Don't ask me what's now. the What's the device? I left the mouse over there. <laughs> like, how do I get the scent? Uh, hold on. The webpage is not loading. How does the scent get to me? I'm sh- <coughs> Web, the website is taking its very sweet time. It's well, a it's a very small aroma based company in Kyoto. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, that part confuses me because yeah. there needs to be a device that shoves the scents into your Yeah, face. I'm sure it's like a little puck that like <laughs> shoots out mists and stuff. Anyway, LG is not done yet, Will. No, speaking of smells. <laughs> the Styler Shoe Care deodorizes your sneaker collection. Ooh. Now, yeah this sounds stupid i honestly am down but you'd be surprised how serious people take their shoe collections all right all right hold on it looks like it's it's it looks like there's like multiple here like he's got a couple in a row well i think those uh those are just the boxes he's storing his shoes in the actual shoe deodorizer is that thing he's taking the white shoes out of oh i thought it was all deodorizers no okay i was gonna say you don't need all of them to be deodorizers because people who like shoes they don't wear all of them no i think those those are just display cases right 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 right. those are cool display cases yeah uh sneakerheads will pay a lot for their shoes and probably go to extremes to show them off that's why lg electronics created lg styler shoe case and it's accompanying lg styler shoe care oh so it's two separate things okay i like we should can I get the shoe case for not shoes? Because they are cool, kind of cool looking cases. What would you put in the shoe case? Toys. Toys? All of my little waifus. You're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You can stack your sneaker collection into the different cases in the display, and you can also clean and deodorize the shoes using the True Stream nozzles that refresh the shoe smell and soak up excess moisture. I might need that for my waifus. I might need that for my <laughs> shoes. It takes 37 minutes to deodorize up to four pairs of your shoes. Four? Well, okay. In a row? <laughs> Color aro aromatherapy sprig shower heads. All right, we don't need to talk about that. Okay. I don't think that's that important. Block cutting board with a built-in screen. All right. There you go. That this, solves our problem. This, is a, this is a bad idea. <laughs> the block cutting board comes with a 13-inch by 20-inch. That's huge. Display that you can use to watch recipe videos while you're looking. While you're, while you're looking. I think they meant cooking. Yeah. I'm confused because that screen does not look that big. Is it on an angle? I don't know. Uh, with a $39 a month subscription. Okay. You can learn how to cook healthy and delicious meals via live and on-demand cooking classes led by expert chefs. So like Peloton yeah. for cooking. You can also detach the screen for cleaning. The price, $700. That's not bad for a screen. So here's my thing with it. The, the actual cutting, it looks like the actual cutting board surface is very, like, small because mm -hmm. the screen is, like, on top of it. 13 by 20 is huge for a screen. For a screen, yeah. But, like. But that doesn't look like 13 by 20. That looks way smaller. Than yeah. And, and, like, you don't have a lot of cutting surface. So, like, it's not going to be comfortable to cut food on. Mm -hmm. And there's a very high chance you're going to cut the screen. This thing has to be a lot bigger than it looks to us right now, because 13 inches tall is a foot and a half, is a foot and an inch. It's, it's, Maybe it's gonna be like, like this. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like this tall, yeah, and this long. But but it doesn't. Okay, no, that's what. That's what, okay. Yeah, I, they're lying about the size of the screen. Impossible. Oh, you, look at that dumb base. Oh, I wish I could rewind. Oh, no, I saw the base. It, it, it looks ridiculous. The size of the screen seems like that was wrong. Yeah. Uh, did we drop connection again? We did. Oh, fun. All right, well, podcast listeners, you get an extra little treat where you're not yeah. going to get detached. Uh... This guy says, I just use my iPhone for this purpose. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But the block calls this the Peloton of the kitchen. Hey, isn't that what I said? We should write a uh, tech article. And isn't Peloton like not doing very well financially right now? No. Yeah. No, so they're not. Maybe stop trying to copy Peloton. While you're at it, you might check out Samsung's bespoke AI wall oven. No, thanks. <laughs> Which can live stream what you're cooking and warn you if something is burning. <laughs> That's actually pretty sick. Yeah. Um... The Norwatch isn't a watch on your wrist. Okay, I'm going to okay. skip that. Uh, the Skytid voice silencing mask. Skytid makes you look like a, like Bane from the Batman movies, but his purpose isn't to make you sound menacing or distort your voice. It's to silence you. <gasps> you can use it as a mask that filters out viruses, but it can also enable you to, enable you to do phone calls on planes or public places, talking as loud as you want in total privacy. It uses the same tech to muffle aircraft engines and it's designed so that you can shout into the mask and no one except the person you are calling can, on the phone will hear you. Hey! I could use this one for playing games late at night. <laughs> That's what the article says. Everyone will hear you. I just want to let everybody know. Everyone's going to hear what you're doing. There's only so much soundproofing that you can yeah. do. You're, gonna, you're just going to sound like a muffled idiot. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to work the way the way yeah. that you are, would hope that it works. But that's the end of this article. And in a similar vein, there's uh, one more that I had under that one uh, that I've seen memed on a lot. Yeah. In the metaverse, no one can hear you scream with this privacy microphone. This no. is a same situation. It's a microphone that you strap to your face. Okay. And it's like a little, it looks like a can. Yeah, it sits it does. on your mouth. And you do, you probably talk like this to all your friends. Yeah. Well, you have this big, silly, heavy thing on your face. It's not going to be good. The only purpose of this is to talk to your gumar in VR chat. <laughs> no, the purpose of this is to, like, feed a horse. 
Yes. <laughs> it looks like a it looks like a little horse feeding mask. Oh my god. There it is. There's the guy. There is he's doing it. All right. I'm not reading the article, but there okay. you go. Uh, the, you know, I was expecting some more VR stuff this time around, 20, 2023. Instead, all we got were horse feeders. I did see uh, the new HTC Vive that's supposed to like compete with like the Meta, not the Quest. They're like Quest for Business. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That one, it's like apparently- A billion dollars. It's, and it's like really thin, so you can't wear glasses, but it has like a dial in it so you can adjust the focus. Okay, that's good. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's very expensive though, and I think it has a lot of like problems that- even Oculus like has worked out already. Yeah. So. Well, we have PlayStation VR coming out in February. Yes. So that should have had a demo or something. The PlayStation was showing off a bunch of stuff. I think they sh- they talked about it. I don't think they had a demo because they should it should have been there. If yeah. It's coming out in a month. <laughs> Last thing I want to talk about from CES, I forgot about this. This is something I'm actually interested in. Razer Edge gaming tablet launches January 26th, so very soon. Yes. Uh, and I have this pre-ordered. Razer announced the Edge combination Android tablet and gaming <coughs> handheld back in October, but it's been fairly quiet on when it will hit stores and how much its Verizon 5G version will cost. I will not be getting that because right. I don't care. Uh, those details were revealed today at CES. The Wi-Fi only Edge with an already announced price of $400 will be available starting January 26th. Oh, is it going to be out 26th? Or is that one you could pre-order? I think I put five dollars down. I don't think I actually paid for it. Now that I think about it, uh, it will be available starting January. I think that's when you can start ordering it. Oh, the Wi-Fi only. Okay, yeah. I definitely put five dollars down. So okay. I think twenty-six is when I will put the rest. Yeah, on. no. The Edge features Qualcomm Snapdragon G three X. Hey, now I don't want to put my email in. A uh, Gen one processor with a Kiro CPU and Adreno GPU. A 6.8 inch, 2400 by 1080, 144 hertz AMOLED screen, Wi Fi 6E, and comes with the Razer Kishi version 2 Pro Clip on controller. It will be uh, exclusively available through Razer.com and at Razer stores. Uh, if you want the 5G Edge, you'll have to go through Verizon for it. The device, which is otherwise identical to the Wi-Fi version, takes advantage of uh, Verizon's 5G Ultra Wideband MM Wave service. This is is fucking exhausting. (laughs) Yeah. For the highest speeds and lowest latency available, since MM Wave is relatively short range and works best with line of sight, the 5G Edge also supports sub-6 mid-band 5G, which is slower but more reliable over long distances. The 5G Edge will retail for $600 uh, from Verizon, but the provider is offering a promotion that cuts the tablet down to $359.99 with the addition of a new line. Or one hundred and seventy nine ninety nine with the purchase of a new five G smartphone. Right. Uh, also, CES. Uh, meanwhile, Razer uh, expanded the Blade gaming laptop, which is like, all right, the if I want like the Blade laptops are pretty sleek. They're like yeah. pretty <coughs> close to MacBooks and yeah. how sleek they are. So they're pretty cool. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, I will be getting this. Uh, I forgot that it's basically. I mean, I'll show it on screen real quick. Uh, it's basically an Android phone with with Joy Cons, Joy Cons on the sides. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of yeah. disappointing if they're trying to make a console. But uh, does it have a camera and stuff, or is it just? I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't think, think it does. So. I didn't see one. Uh, I mean, it, sh- it it doesn't need it. No. But I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, I have an Android phone that I use like sometimes. Yeah. And now this could be that. Just be. For me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. I don't think it has a camera, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's that. And there's an update on that. I guess I'll be fulfilling my pre-order on January 26th. That doesn't mean it's shipping, though. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when the actual shipping is going to happen. Anyway, that's it for CES. Yes. But still a lot of stuff that we have here in this document. So let's... Try to plow through it as well. Plow best we house can. through it, but first I want to say thank you to Screamy Yelly Gamer with 31 months. Love the content lately, Bob. Keep up the awesome content. Thanks, dude. Danger Zone. Thanks for the two months. Do you guys wipe front to back or back to or back to front? I thought he's. I thought he was gonna say 
or back and forth. <laughs> like sideways. Yeah. No. No. Front to back, back to front. It has to be front to back. Yeah. Wait. Front. Wait. Yeah. Front, front to, back. to back. Front, front to, back. to back. Yeah. 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 I kind of I start and end with the front to back, but I kind of do both. You rub. Now, now the question is. Yeah, I start and end with the front. The back. question is: Do you go in? Do you go in from the front, or do you go in from the back? No, I go in from the back. Yeah. How would you go in from the front? You I don't. I don't know. I I know there are psychopaths who go in from the front. I also know there are psychopaths who stand up. Yeah. When they do it, the chat was just going for that too. Yeah. No, you can't stand up. Yeah. No. no. That's just ridiculous. You ever see the TikTok of the guy who talks about how he reaches into the toilet and grabs the shit and throws it out? <laughs> no. And acts like it, that's normal. That's like a normal thing to do. He's like, well, you guys don't do that. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, mm, bruh. With eight months, truly the best gaming podcast. Yeah. Hey, thanks, dude. <laughs> thanks go. so much, yeah. man. Appreciate you. Uh, Flo says, I stand up way easier. No, it's not. Your cheeks clench when you're standing. Yeah. So no, simple, try it. Try it science. the way the rest yeah. of us do it. Xavier with the three months faster to re up my subscription than to watch the ad. Here's some money from Bezos. Thanks, Thank dude. You. By the way, if you watch this on Twitch, you get no ads for the whole month if you're subscribed, and if mm -hmm. you use Amazon Prime, you don't even have to pay anything. H uh, three cat uh, cat tome says uh, get civilized by a bidet. That too. Just do that. I gotta put it in. I it's sitting in the closet. I got the tushy one. Oh yeah, those that's pretty easy to put in. Yeah. Uh all right. More Sony stuff. Yes. This is this was announced at CES, but um I'm gonna avoid showing the screen if I don't have to, because I think that might be why the stream okay. crashed a few times. Uh the PlayStation 5 shortage is finally over, according to Sony. Everyone who wants a PS5 should have a much easier time finding one at retailers globally, starting from this point forward, said Jim Ryan, the company's gaming boss. During its CES presentation, the company also announced it sold around 30 million consoles at this point. That's around 5 million more than the last time uh, it was it released sales numbers in November. Okay. That's a holiday. So it made 5 it sold 5 yeah. million over the holiday, which yeah. is pretty good. So the long and short of it is we should be seeing PlayStation 5 should be much easier mm -hmm. to get to get your hands on in the coming weeks and months. Okay. So that's good. Um, that'll be good for, you know, when I finally buy one when Spider-Man comes out. Hopefully there's a nice special edition. Ooh. Yeah. They, yeah, they haven't made a special edition. Neither is Xbox. They've done, well, Xbox has. They did the Halo one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was sick. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah, then they need to make special edition. Did yeah. You, we talked about the special edition, uh, Switch. The, 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 yeah. the, the Zelda one. They've yeah. been kind of crushing it with special edition yeah. switches that their first couple not great no my favorite special edition console of all time is a uh playstation oh it's uh, not the the 360 star wars one no that's very nice too yeah uh we didn't actually own this one um did you know i looked up the price of ps4 pros because i was thinking like maybe getting one for cheap and they're still like very expensive they're still like three hundred dollars. They were five. Yeah. So that's that makes sense. I mean, it came down, but like three hundred dollars yeah. for like a used PlayStation Four. Well, the next up is a PlayStation Five, which is five hundred dollars. So it kind of yeah. makes sense, and you can't get one. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite console of all. Uh, my favorite special oh, edition. Oh, that's it's the a nice one. Yeah. Metal Metal Gear Solid Five PlayStation Four the, mm -hmm. with the with the like uh, burgundy red. And the gold stripe in the middle with the blue light is freaking cool. Wasn't that only in Japan? It might have been only in Japan. Yeah. Or or super limited. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Japanese version. I think it was freaking cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, cool. So it looks like Sony's doing good, and and I think they yeah they said yeah it's gonna be easier to find. Uh, yeah. I don't really necessarily believe them, but I'll, I'll believe it when I walk into Best Buy and see a stack of them. Yeah. You know? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, th we. this is very important to talk about. Yes. I'm going to just click on the Nintendo Life article. Okay. Uh, peripheral brand NYXI 
uh, has revealed its latest Nintendo Switch joy, uh, wireless joypad, dubbed the NYXI Wizard. Directly inspired by the GameCube, the joypad features Hall effects uh, analog sticks to emulate drift, to eliminate drifting, to emulate drifting, <laughs> to eliminate drifting, along with interchangeable joystick they want rings. They to feel as, as close to a Nintendo controller as yeah. possible, so they're emulating the drift of a Joy-Con. It also comes with interchangeable joystick rings, a turbo function, illuminated ABXY buttons, and an ergonomic slip-free design. It goes without saying, of course, that the controller also functions as a set of Joy-Cons. Simply slide, simply slide the two sides from the pad and whack them directly into your Switch. Um, here are the full list of features directly from NYXI. It's the preferred gamepad for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. A Hall of from who? Who's saying that? It's the preferred gamepad. I mean... You ha it's not even released yet. Well, I think the game, the GameCube controller, they're saying is the preferred. They should say the preferred gamepad design. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hall effect joystick with no drifting. Uh, design, uh, design for performance. Uh, ZR and ZL buttons uh, are quieter, lighter, and have less resistance and have shorter trigger distances to help you shoot faster. ABXY uh, have white light effects and a comfortable feel for an enhanced gaming experience. Uh, removable joysticks and replaceable joystick rings, uh, ergonomic non-slip design, wireless connection and long-lasting performance, adjustable turbo and mapping functions, one key wake up and screenshot functionality. Oh, that's yes, kind of a huge deal. Not a lot of uh, third-party controls have the wake up functionality. Um, well, so what I, I want to point out is what they mean by the interchangeable rings, the joystick rings. So the GameCube, of course, has octagonal the, uh, joystick the stick, gate. The stick gate, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's octagonal. Which is good for like precise things, but also comes with like a regular circular gate, right. so you can use it for like driving games and stuff, which I think is neat. That is really cool. Yes, I like that. Uh, it has Hall effect sticks, yeah. which are supposed to be drift, like the new hotness. Yeah, I feel like this might be worth doing a video on, but uh, I'm skeptical of Hall effect. Um, there, they are supposed supposedly less susceptible to drift based on how they're just just yeah. th the nature of them but it's always these third party companies that use the hall effect sticks so they're never calibrated correctly yeah. so so they're even though they're going to get drift they're going to break they won't be as easy to break but they won't feel as good because yeah. it's third party like that doesn't really put a lot of effort into into the, the the calibration of it yeah. so i i i the whole effect right now to me is just a, a marketing term because yeah. like we've never worried about drift on a regular controller before we've only ever really worried about it on that's joy -Cons. true yeah well because the joy cons are so compact and small that yeah. it's easier for like all the like everything to like rub off and like disintegrate yeah. like we've had analog controllers like gaining back years yeah None of them have dripped. The only things that I used to worry about with our controllers back on like the freaking GameCube and PlayStation 2 days yeah. was leaving the controllers upside down yeah. while the console was off. Because you turn it on and then, then you would see a thing drift. And yeah. it happened on the N64 too. You'd see like yeah. the, 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 the cursor drift. But like that was easy. But then you, then you unplug and plug it by end. It's yeah. fixed. You know? Uh, I was going to say, I think even PS2 had like a if you press all four shoulder buttons at the same time, it would reset it or something. Oh yeah. So I, I'm, I like the idea of hall effect sticks. Yeah. I, I, I think we all got to cool it with the hall effect <laughs> yeah. stuff. You know, like if a controller doesn't have hall effect, it's not the end of the world. Um, well, if you want to give this one a, a try for yourself, it is available for pre-order um, for the low, low price of $69. It is actually not. It's sold out. Yes, it is. Uh, because I tried to get one. And then I looked through my emails, and they emailed me back in December. Okay. And I never looked at it. So Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Always look <laughs> at your emails. I tweeted about this, and a lot of the comments were kind of uh, uh, surprisingly negative. Um, some of them, <laughs> understandably so. Mm -hmm. This is very clearly inspired by Shank Mods' video where he made this. Right. Uh but that, I mean, props to him for actually making it. Yeah. But it is kind of like what everybody was thinking was going to happen with the Switch when it came out. Yeah, like I was going to say, when it launched, everyone thought that this was going to be an option. Like, yeah. 
And now, like, we finally have an actual retail version of it. It took six years, yeah. but finally... It took the end of the Switch's life cycle. Somebody made an actual one. And and I think a few months ago, there was a GameCube Joy-Con that hit the market. But the ABXY wasn't configured like a GameCube controller. Oh, so yeah, I was like, right. why? Yeah. I don't give a shit about this thing if it's not yeah. going to be configured like a GameCube controller. Um, but this is, so I'm happy about that. A, a lot of other people are complaining because they don't like the GameCube controller. Which is fine. Yeah. Like, that's understandable. Somebody was like, you got to give it up on that controller, which is what we, we had that stance with Ultimate. Yeah. Except I turned around on it because I do think the GameCube controller is a great also, input device for also Ultimate specifically. As a good uh, Mario Kart controller. Yeah. Because the go button is the big button right there. Yeah. Um, this controller, I would say, is basically only for, for Smash and maybe Mario Kart. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got to play a lot of Smash if you're gonna buy something like this. I think it'd be pretty cool. Uh, there's also a concern because it's got USB-C ports, I think, on each controller. Yeah. So people are all, uh, people are worried about that. It'll probably still charge off of the con- off of the console. Usually, these third-party Joy Cons have USB uh, inputs for firmware updates. Yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be too worried about that. Hopefully, I'll get my hands on it when they uh, when they launch. Uh, all right. What is what? Uh, Wizards of the Coast. Oh, Wizards of the Coast reportedly cancels at least five games. Holy shit! Yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons publisher Wizards of the Coast has canceled at least five games, unannounced video game projects. The publisher, which also makes Magic the Gathering and is part of the Hasbro toy conglomerate, has made no secret of its ambition to become a major major player in the video games uh, industry, establishing and buying development studios, hiring creatives, and signing deals. It now seems it's scaling back on those plans somewhat. In a statement to Bloomberg, Wizards of the Coast said that it's still committed to using digital games and had made some changes to our long-term portfolio to focus on games which are strategically aligned uh, with developing our existing brand and those uh, which show promise in expanding or engaging our audience in new ways. In other words, only those projects with the best chance of success uh, have survived the call. Fewer than 15 people will lose their jobs at Wizards of the Coast, the company said. But Bloomberg said the cancellations could have a much bigger impact at external studios working on games for the company. It's not clear which projects have been canceled. Bloomberg mentions that external studios, Other Side Entertainment, and Hidden Path Entertainment both working on games for Wizards of the Coast, uh, plus two further external projects and one internal game that were in early development. However, Hidden Path narrative director uh, Whitney Beltran said in a tweet that the studio's D&D game is still in development and that it is actively hiring for the project. Uh, given the small scale of the layoffs, the cancellations won't affect, won't have a major effect on the internal studios at Wizards of the Coast. Um, in t- October 2022, the company announced that uh, 2Q Games, the developer of the 2021 Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, was rebranding as Invoke Studios and working on a AAA D&D game. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like they're trying to get into games. They thought they could do it themselves. They realized they can't, so they got to scale back and start over again. Okay, so... So they're canceling <clears throat> games, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone forever. Correct. And also, we didn't know what these games were anyway. Yeah. So uh, just some internal uh, uh, conflicts yeah. happen- happening. This was something we talked about very recently. We talked about... Uh, uh, well, we talked about how they wanted to monetize actual D&D. Yeah. Like the, like the way video games are monetized with like microtransactions right. and DLC and stuff. So <clears throat> it looks... This is like... I mean, there have been D&D games before. There have been mm-hmm. a lot of D&D games. They've always been like licensed out. Yeah. And I think they want to have like a much more stricter control over it. Mm-hmm. Maybe this will be like a more loosening of the guard where they'll let, you know, third parties like maybe not fully license it, but kind of do what like Warhammer does. They should have a little bit of oversight, but yeah. license it to studios who can handle it. Or, mm-hmm. or uh, give one of these major studios a blessing. Like, like, like why... Is there like uh, what are some of these games? Like some of these like fantasy games that like are very clearly inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Like yeah. just, just just let give, them yeah. have the license, you know. Yeah. They'd, they'd probably do something great with it. <clears throat> um. So I, I, I again, 
I'm not big into Dungeons and Dragons, but I don't understand how they don't have a massive IP. You know, they should yeah. be as big as like you know. Uh, I mean, they do have. They are one of the biggest IPs. But, yeah, but they should be bigger I because think, they have no recognizable characters. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I mean, you are the recognizable character. That's the yeah. problem. Uh, Baldur's Gate is like the biggest um, Dungeons and Dragons video game franchise there is. Oh, it's right? actually licensed. Yes. Oh, okay. I think there's a new one coming out. Okay. Yeah, Baldur's Gate Three is currently in development from the creators of Divinity. No, <laughs> oh, that's exactly what I was talking yeah. about. That's perfect. Divinity was the game I was thinking. I was like, that's a game that is for sure <laughs> supposed to be Dungeons and Dragons, but just yeah. doesn't have a license. So they are doing. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. Anyway. Uh, do we get notifications? Yeah, we got Mega Dragon with 100 bits. Hey, bros, it's hey. my birthday. Happy birthday. I hit the big 31. Getting even f- fatter in my 30s? Wish me luck. Father. Getting even father in my 30s. Is is this person having a child? I, I, or uh, are they getting fat? They get, or are they the same thing? It's pot. Look, man, I, I gained <laughs> a lot of weight when those little, two little ragamuffins came, so... Further. further oh that's a different okay. that's yes that i didn't say getting even further <coughs> in my 30s oh because you gained yeah. one whole year in your yeah. 30s. Ooh, come talk to me when you gain five whole years yeah uh it's all your body just starts falling apart yeah anyway uh congratulations yes C- cj gabriel with 24 months who's down to kickstart a hall effect air fryer <laughs> Now, I have an air fryer in this house now. Uh, I haven't used it. Hannah uses it all the time. I still okay. haven't used it. You, you I'm, should, like inti- I'm a little intimidated by it. You should, you should totally use it. Don't be intimidated. It's not that hard. It's like the easiest thing in the world. I would say uh, you don't. it says you don't have to preheat it. You preheat it. It's mm-hmm. not, the, not the end of the world. I um, don't even preheat the oven sometimes, though. Like if I'm putting a slice of pizza in, I, I have it timed perfectly. I just shove it in there blast it up to 450 and wait exactly 12 minutes so yeah, every time it's perfect i that when i reheat pizza i use that's what i have a toaster oven for oh but god you got too wait you got too many ovens i have three ovens i got a regular oven i got a toaster oven and i have an an air fryer oven and a microwave oven so four <laughs> <laughs> i do have a microwave I, I was, I don't know why I was, because I'm a homeowner. This is what I do. I was looking up uh, ovens. Like, if I, if I, God forbid, I need well, to, Well, like, Samsung has a brand new smart yes. oven. But I was, like, looking up ovens, like, how much do, do like, oven ranges cost? And, like, now, apparently, they they have ovens that are also air fryers. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's cool. Apparently, they're it all, should, No, wait. It should be a microwave that's also an air fryer. Yeah, apparently, all but of them are... But then it has to be metal, and that doesn't make yeah, sense. Apparently, they're all garbage, though. So, don't, okay. don't buy a combination air fryer oven. But... I feel like they can get away with selling a regular oven and just saying it has air fryer capabilities. Yeah. Because what's the fucking difference? Uh, I don't know. Oh, you know what? I was hanging out with some people the other day and they were talking about how Best Buy has a range that's like 30 grand or something. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a subscriber goal. Yeah. Um, speaking of the kitchen, Oreos, Oreos, yay! The first Xbox Oreos. exclusive of 2023 is a box of Oreos. Here they are. <laughs> Unlock playfulness. Uh oh, it's a European only uh, collaboration. Oh, get this out of my face. Screw then. it, then I don't care. Somebody want to send us? Yeah, the, the, the Xbox Oreos. PO box is in the description. Uh, this being a, a junk food video game colla- collaboration, some in-game cosmetics are tagging along by redeeming codes attached to Xbox Oreo packaging. You can claim some vaguely Oreo-style armor in Halo Infinite, a vehicle skin for Forza Horizon 5, and Sea of Thieves ship fit, which is easily my favorite of the bunch. Okay, but again, only if you're in Europe. So it doesn't help over here in the new world. Is this is this it? Oh, you can buy it on eBay. <laughs> Sixty dollars on eBay. Damn. Oh, that's kind of cool. All yeah, right, it looks kind of sick. Yeah, that's, that's it. Ca- looks kind of sick. That's kind of fun. All right. Anyway, uh, next up, 
We got Sakurai on physical versus digital games. Oh boy. Steam director of Super Smash Brothers, uh, Masahiro Sakurai weighs in on the topic of physical versus digital game libraries. Uh, Commonly debated amongst gamers, especially those who play on console. For many, having the box and disc is just as important as having the game. Uh, For Sakurai, he gives his own opinions on his YouTube channel. The director has been posting plenty of videos on his YouTube channel. It's been great. Yes. They're very short little bite-sized things, too. He occasionally uh, delves into a grab bag category with related topics, uh, releasing videos on the perils of lag, the price of video games, his company, Sora Limited, or even videos about his cat. Um... (laughs) His most recent video was about uh, physical versus digital collections. He started the video by going over the pros and cons of each side where players can keep physical releases forever and it will have less data to install depending on the game, along with mentioning that limited limited edition items that come with the game are also worth collecting. For digital purchases of a game, he lists the appeal of having the instant purchase and the download option without needing to run to the store and they're always in stock while it's on the storefront. For that end, Sakurai is on Team Digital when it comes to purchasing new video games for himself. Interesting. This is accompanied by a few photos of Sakurai's collection of games that he owns physically, most of them being loose cartridges. He notes that when he was he notes that when he was with his old company, he had a dedicated room for storage, which is where he kept all of his video games. After going independent, however, he had a lot less room. That means he now stores games more compactly these days, such as having a binder for gaming discs uh, where he values the experience rather than the packaging. He still notes that digital releases are still quite pricey, still being as much as physical purchases. In the lead up to this video, there were two polls on Sakurai's English and Japanese YouTube channels where, where it asked subscribers whether they prefer physical or digital. The results were released showing uh, that while a number of English-speaking fans prefer physical, the Japanese-speaking were split. Viewers note, with Japanese houses being smaller compared to U.S. houses, it leaves less room for storing a lot of physical items, which is why some Japanese gamers, including Sakurai, would prefer a digital collection. That makes a lot of sense. It is (laughs) a little sad that he puts them in binders. I know. I've always... It's a little sad. That always, like, hurts me when I see... Because even, like... When we would like, we had like CD binders. Yeah. But that was just for travel. When we would come home, we would always put them yeah, back in the that's toolcases. That's very nerdy. I <sighs> remember working at GameStop and like people would bring in like binders of games. Yeah. That was really. No, like to, sad to, to see. me, like the whole package is like part of the experience yeah. of the game. And like, yeah, we'll like, if I'm at a convention, I'll buy a loose disc, but I'm the type of psychopath that creates a case for it. Yeah. I have like custom cases for all these loose games now. I do kind of appreciate not having a big physical collection of switch games though i do like having my little my little i have st- i have like 20 games though i have like 20 physical games. i have 11 switch games yeah so i'm trying to be all digital but i still have like a decent a, a i try to be like collection. that with P- ps4 and xbox one i have a decent collection of like physical games yeah from. i just don't have that many ps4 <clears throat> I'm PS5 or Xbox games, yeah. uh, but uh, Switch I have a billion games, but, but they're now, all on the on the SD card. And now the problem with you know the fact that I have physical PS4 and Xbox One games is if when I'm gonna get the new consoles, I have to get the ones with the disc drive. Yeah, because how yeah. else am I gonna play those games? Especially if I want to replace the PS4 and Xbox One. I've been physical with the uh, <clears throat> PS5 and, and Xbox, yeah. uh, but well, not so much Xbox because that's all Game Pass. Yeah, but uh. I don't like this whole idea. Like, I like buying digitally because on my Switch, I have a one terabyte card. Right. And it so far has every game I've ever purchased on it. So when the eShop goes down on the Switch, the plan is that everything will still be accessible on that micro SD card. Right. Eventually, that micro SD card might die, but you know, whatever. Um, the same could be said for physical cartridges. They could die too. Um, Mm -hmm. on PlayStation, I'm a little worried because even just having the physical, you still need to update it. Well, I mean, but that's true too on the switch. Cause there are a lot of games where like only half the game is on the cart. There are a lot of games where most of the game is downloaded, but I have it downloaded. Right. So I'm saying it will be updated. Yeah. At least to a playable state. You know, well, even on like PlayStation, Xbox, as long as the game is on the system, on the hard drive, you yeah. should be okay. Yeah. So having a physical, 
I think is a little worthless <laughs> because if you download it digitally, it's already updated. Yeah. Just that the showcase apparently is called... we were muted. Oh. I think my the 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 mouse fell and it muted us for a okay. second. Go ahead. Uh, what you need to know: new Xbox showcase has been rumored for some time now, and we have uh, some concrete information. Sources suggest that the showcase is called Xbox Developer Underscore Direct and will feature content from Xbox and Bethesda. We're expecting the show to go live on January 25th at 2 p.m. Pacific, although the uh, date subject to change. Games expected to appear include Redfall, Forza, Forza Motorsport, and Minecraft Legends. Um, this will be an this will be an intimate look at major games for 2023, as Microsoft seeks to ramp up transparency and frequency on upcoming Xbox games. <clears throat> um, that's good because they need to do something. It's getting a bit ridiculous that there's like little to no exclusives. Yeah, aside from Oreos. So it's good. <laughs> So it's good that they're having a little event to show stuff. Yeah. I have a prediction. <clears throat> there won't be anything in this. You know, it's like going to be very lackluster. Well, I mean, we already know Redfall is coming out. We know they're working on a new Forza Motorsport. And we know that, like, I guess we know there's a new Minecraft game coming out. So it'll just be that. And it won't go over anything new about any of those games. This will be an email, <clears throat> is what this will be. Okay. It's not going to be anything special. Uh, Vampire Survivors is mobile. For free. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll try this. Everybody uh, keeps going nuts about this game. I, I tried it on mobile and it's it's I don't know how to play it. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's definitely a game that would benefit from some sort of controller. It looks very down. complicated. Yeah. Um but the story behind why they did it, I think is the most interesting part. So basically what happened was it was always in the, the pipeline to do a mobile version, but they saw so many knockoffs mm -hmm. on on iOS and Android that they decided we got to get actual vampire survivors on on the app stores. And so they rush released this as fast as they could. And they released it for free. So that when you go to vampire, look for vampire survivor, you're guaranteed to get the uh. actual vampire survivor and you're getting it. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. I have been dying the past month. <laughs> you're getting the actual vampire survivor for free. Um, and it has a monetization method that uh, the developer felt was the least predatory. So they're doing this basically for branding, which I think is yes very smart. Yeah. They, they didn't want any clones, so they're like, here, just forget it. You, yeah. we, we want to hold on to our branding so you could just have it for free. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I'll try it. The chat is saying that it's one joystick and one button. So it's probably left side you move, right side you press. Yeah, moving... Uh, moving, I understood. It's the the combat that I didn't. I think you just press the right side of the screen. It'll probably. All right, I'll have to try it. Probably do the thing again. Anyway, uh, oh, it's also five dollars on Steam apparently. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I moved the Zelda article. Uh, let's do this one quick, and then I think we're unless there's anything else you really want to talk about, but I think we're good. Uh, not really. I think I mean all the rest. All right, Possibly. Zelda Tears of the Kingdoms is reportedly the last significant Switch release in the works for some time. Says who? Uh, that's according to two reporters uh, taking to Twitter in recent weeks. Firstly, GameIndustry.biz reporter Chris Dring responded to a Twitter user back in November in a tweet below, revealing that according to his sources, Tears of the Kingdom could be followed by a huge gap for Nintendo first-party releases. More recently, VGC's Andy Robinson tweeted that Tears of the Kingdom could be the final major launch on Switch, according to the reporter's predictions and rumors of new hardware. Both reporters allege that Tears of the Kingdom might be followed by a significant gap for, Sw gap for Switch exclusives um, if there is even another major exclusive release after the new Zelda title at all. Currently, as things stand, Tears of the Kingdom is slated to be released... Um, so it's slated to be released before several other Nintendo exclusive games, all of which are set to launch at some point in the unknown future, including Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, Pikmin 4, and Metroid Prime 4. Uh, Dring and Robinson are clearly viewing all three titles as far less significant than Tears of the Kingdom <laughs> or other Switch heavy hitters like Mario Kart 8 or Animal Crossing. Oh, well, yeah. That and it's, makes sense. it's hard to argue that viewpoint. Uh, given that the latter two games has sold in excess of 30 million units worldwide, another major Nintendo franchise, Pokemon, saw two big games launch last year, uh, implying that a lengthy gap, implying a lengthy gap before another outing. I, I think it's, 
this kind of tracks. It kind of makes a little bit of sense. Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the one of the biggest. It's going to be the biggest game of the year, especially on Switch. Yeah, it's going to be one of the biggest selling games on the yeah. Switch, period, uh, through the whole history of the Switch. Mm. Uh, I think Pikmin 4 is still definitely a Switch a Switch game. You yeah. Know, current gen Switch game. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think, you know, you got Tears of the Kingdom, Pikmin 4. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> um, and last episode, we were talking about how uh, we'll probably get some sort of announcement at the end of this year and then a new console next year. Yeah. Um, I still think that tracks, but that kind of makes this year really sad. Yeah. Because there's not going to really be much. Like, where's the Mario? We need some Mario. Yeah. You know? What, is there just going to be a, a dry spell this year? I guess there's... I mean, unless they port something over. Yeah. You know? Then, yeah, there's not going to be a Mario game this year. I think there's got to be another big thing coming out this year. But, uh, I mean, this seems like a really safe thing to say. Like, a, like, because no matter what, you can't be wrong. Like, yeah. like, of, you, you could just always say um, it's not as big as as zelda unless you know in the summer they do oh metroid prime 4 it's available right now <laughs> yeah but even metroid prime 4 the these guys can just turn around and say it wasn't as big as zelda yeah it's true so, too. i don't know but <laughs> first time chatter leb drift in the chat lol a pikmin game is coming out and this dude calls this year sad the fuck <laughs> you ever play a pikmin game <laughs> It's not exactly Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> uh, we're not. We got. Exactly. We got. We got like four shots of what this new Pikmin game looks like. Yeah, and people are losing their goddamn mind. We have four. It's Pikmin, man. Got, it's not that great. We have four shots of this new Pikmin game, and they look like Pikmin one, two, and three. Yeah, I'm not yeah. jazzed about Pikmin. Anyway, is that all the news? That's all the news. Good. Uh, cool. I have things to unbox, but also we have a tweet of the week. Hey, I decided for first of all. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. I decided that tweets of the week. Uh, I'm changing the rules for tweet of the week. They could also be TikToks. So. Oh. Uh, uh, what? 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 <laughs> so this. Do we need the Gen Z audience that badly? Let's see. All right, all right, here we go, baby. All right. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I don't know how well it's going to work, but here we go. Okay, here we go. Play it one more time. <laughs> oh my god! I I I I like that. That was that was enough to break to break the the rules there. Yeah. Um, for you Gen Zers out there, that was a very bad cover of the <laughs> classic Led Zeppelin 1971 song, uh, "Black Dog." Uh, you, <laughs> I mean. It started good. Yeah, it started pretty he, good. He got he got the the start right. <laughs> uh, if you if you I mean you didn't really need to see it. The people are saying I only showed half of the screen, but yeah. it, it's all audio. Um, but it looked like the singer was wearing not just noise canceling headphones, but like but like over the ear, like, like hunting yeah. headphones. So I don't think he could. I don't think any band member could hear each other. Yeah. So that's why I think it was as bad as yeah. it was. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk to you while I unbox something. Yes, that means I have to open up the Discord to talk to people from last week's Wolfden Podcast who left comments over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Yeah, that's what I got to do. <clears throat> I'm really losing my voice. Without you the are. I don't know what is happening to me. My I, Mom called me today and she said, are you guys sick? I was like, "What? What do you mean? We're fine. Everything's fine." So I've been, I've been sick for like weeks. Yeah. It's been hard to swallow food. Oh, That's God. how bad it's been. You've just been on soup for the past. Even that hurts. <laughs> uh, don't, kids. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, uh, before you open, before you say anything, 
I went to the PO box today. Yes. And we got third wave water. And they also put in my email address. Okay. Whoever said I did not buy this for myself. Okay. Some who sent me this is what I want to know. Do you know what this is? No. Do you know what third wave means? It's the it's after the second wave. <laughs> it's a specifically a coffee thing. Okay. No. It's f- fancy pretentious coffee stuff. Okay, so I just, clearly I don't know. Like what like a uh, fancy cough like pretentious hipster coffee shop is yeah. a third wave coffee okay. shop. Okay. So what this is, mm-hmm. you get yourself distilled water. Okay. And you put this packet in okay. and it gives you the right minerals so that your coffee tastes good. I, I so so I I've been looking into this and I appreciate it and I kind of want to try it, but I've been just filtering my the water before yeah. I make the coffee out of it, and like I have a special like Brita pitcher that I leave in like the cabinet at room temperature that yeah. I put water in, and I think it's the same. <laughs> like I keep I kept trying to find out stuff. Is and it I, just I, charcoal? Well, the filter is yeah, but this is the is just specific minerals. Okay. And I think that it's just clever marketing. I think that the the most of it is snake oil. I I think that the Brita filter is the same. If you have good water, you know, and we have decent water here on the island, I think it's the same shit. As long as you're not getting a what's it called? There's a there's a thing that like clogs up your pipes. Like it looks like it looks like salt. I forgot what it's called, but. uh, But that, oh my God, there's a million packets in here. Okay. Espresso profile. So this this will make my water espresso grade water. I will Uh, try it. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll let you know how it is. Makes 12 gallons. Holy shit, dude. Calcium? No. I mean, maybe. But there's a word for that that type of uh, what it does to like the pipes of like an espresso machine or something. Um, Anyway. The water, once I put it through the through the filter, it's it's fine. Scale. Yeah. Yes, scale. It's called scale. Anyway, I'll try that. Anyway, what do the people have to say? Uh Christian Eulingberg uh says the new Switch should be called the Super Nintendo Switch. Yeah, it should, yeah. but they won't. <clears throat> it needs to have <clears throat> it needs to have a simple name, but also a name that clearly indicates it's a new system. Yeah. I think Super will do that. I think even just Switch 2 will do that. So this will is very special. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, it's Nevercade. Oh, I've been talking about this. Well, why don't you open it with then? games from Capcom and IRAM? There you go. Very nice. Uh, I just got it. Uh, the Brad Foot Gaming says, if Xbox gave away their older first-party games on Games with Gold, it would devalue Game Pass. Why would they give away games from that service for free? If you want those games, you should be spending your $9.99 per month on Game Pass instead. Well, Bradfoot Gaming, because games with gold is not free. Yeah. We kind of say it. We kind of say, get these free games, but, yeah. we, but you, you're, still paying, you're still paying your subscription service. The whole thing is right now, uh, an Xbox Live Gold membership really only gets you three things. It gets you access to online multiplayer. It gets you um, two free games a month. And it gets you discounts on games when they go on sale, like an extra discount on top of the sale price. So those three things, to me, as of right now, are not really adding up to being worth $60 a year. Yeah. You know? Because, yeah, online multiplayer is great. I don't play multiplayer all that much, if at all. Um, The games that they're offering have not been... You know, the most exciting games on the market. Um, and the discounts, I mean, yeah, they're nice, but, you know, more often than not, they're not that much more than, like, what the regular discounts are. So, by adding, I'm not saying they have to do, like, first party games, but, like, something, anything, like, something yeah. a little bit more exciting than what we've been getting. Remember last week we talked about the Netflix games? Mm-hmm. You know what they added today? What? Shredder's Revenge. Oh my god. Netflix added Shredder's Revenge to their catalog so you can go into you can actually go into the App Store and type in Netflix Shredder's Revenge and it's there. And you can just download it and log in with your Netflix account. You can play Shredder's Revenge on your phone? <laughs> on your phone. Oh my god, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And that's good cuz like a beat em up you just match yeah. it. Uh 
<laughs> I think Games with Gold is a good entry <clears throat> to Game Pass. So yeah. like, why not give people a little taste of what they could get if they get Game Pass? But also, they're gonna get rid of Game of uh, Xbox Live Gold eventually anyway. Yeah. So just putting them on this service, games that you could keep even when they leave Game Pass, might be just a good like little symbolic gesture. Yeah. No. Anyway, Salvador Pedras, Ped, Ped, Pedraza from last week's Wolf Den podcast says, I really enjoyed Assassin's Creed 1. 2 is a superior game, but it's still enjoyed the first one. Yeah, I did yeah. after I beat it, but like... Yeah, I, there's, there's fun to be had bit. in Assassin's Creed 1. I, but I it, think there's just a chunk somewhere after like the middle section where it kind of drags on. Yeah, it, it's just, it's clear that, you know, it, it was a clunky first attempt. And then when yeah. you get the second one, everything just works so much better. Uh, Gigamesh uh, Ethics says, uh, Gilgamesh Ethics says, uh, thanks for reminding me to grab Dishonored 2 from Amazon Prime. I've been waiting to play for years, but couldn't ever justify the $20 and don't fly my, don't fly my blank much these days. It's a stalling I, I, cross. Yeah. I don't know what that emoji is. Jolly Rogers, my pirate flag, um, my assassin flag uh william will i think they will come out with the switch to next year and bob i'm gonna end this man's whole career and blow out your eardrums with a single button what did i do what did you do what did i do you do a lot of things did i blow your guys eardrums out so it says it says the capcom and irem collection but the, only the irem collection is a uh, i only got a card for that that is, look at the, show the back of no no the back of the console with no cartridge in it. That's ridiculous. Big well, because they put the cart the this in and it's got a big empty hole. In yeah, the back. that's crazy. How do you turn this sucker on? How does it feel? It's weird because it's very wide mm -hmm. and it's like very rectangular. So like there's not a lot of like mm -hmm. grip to it. Okay. So it's just basically like holding a rectangle. Okay. <laughs> Uh, tweet of the week. Is the tweet of the week that loud? Good. <laughs> if it is, good. Uh, okay, now we're in the regular chat for a brief moment. When, when the audio got muted like 10 minutes ago, it made a loud sound for a split second and went silent. Uh, I dropped my mouse on the keyboard thing. Is it cool? Yeah, so far, so good. I mean, it's booting up. English... Hi, Bob. Hi, Will. Hello, the Big Fat Geek. Hey. You got to admit the hand crossbow really made Assassin's Creed 1 worth it. Yeah. That was that was okay. Bob, I purchased my Quest 2 back in March of 2021 after watching your review. You helped me make up my mind on getting it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Thanks for watching. How did Wood's citizenship test go? I don't think he took it yet. I, I feel like I would have heard about it. Uh, either of you playing Marvel Snap? Uh, we talked about it. I tried. It was too many numbers. I want to try this. Oh, uh, I want to try Vampire Survivor. Uh, people in the chat were saying it auto attacks. The button is just for menus. Oh, because like I like when I get close to them enemies, they were like hitting me. So like nothing was auto attacking. Maybe you didn't have a weapon equipped Maybe. or something. Uh. Pikmin 4 looks better in my in in the way Mario hold on Pikmin 4 looks better in the way Mario Odyssey does from 3D World oh like a step up from the last game uh, well I would hope so okay I don't know I mean I'm not a Pikmin fan so I don't know how much I could relate to that are you playing a game yeah I was trying to test out a game okay it just that sounded like a lot of weird sounds. Yeah, it's all that was all UI stuff. Now it's frozen. Okay. <laughs> so far so good with the ever I'm stuck on the on the whatchamacallit. This thing gives me amigo vibes. No, this This how the fuck I'm seriously I'm stuck on the attract screen. <laughs> going very good so far it's just, i really suspect that this thing is gonna i'm going in with those but this has been around for like a long time the Everkid? yeah it's been out like for like past few years i see this at cvs all the time why do i have it now i don't know why did i just get it i don't know 
This I think this might be the new version. It I pre-ordered it forever ago because yeah. uh first of all it went to our parents' house. That's yes. how long ago I pre-ordered it. And um I forgot about it. I it just I got a charge for $160 on my credit card and I and I had I ran into Hannah's room and I was like, yeah. "What the fuck did you get with my credit card?" <laughs> All right, I got it. What do you I mean? figured out how to ins- insert coins. You have to insert a coin. Yeah. Oh, that's a, I hate that about arcade emulation. Hey, so it's far, the new EXP version. Yes. Okay. I mean, so far so good. How much different is it than the last version? Well, this one has like a vert. Uh, hold on. For some games, I can hold it like this and play it vertically. Oh my That's god. That's fun. You specifically told me you wasn't buying the Evercade ass hat. It doesn't mean what's the what's the difference? I don't want it. I don't know why I pre-ordered it. I but think I wanted to it. make a video on it, and I can promise you I'm not going to like this thing. <laughs> also, I watched that 2-hour long video on the oof sound effect, by the way. Today. Oh yeah. <laughs> right? It's fascinating. I kind of like how this feels. Oh, it's got clicky L and R buttons. Where are all the Capcom games that it advertises on the box? Did it come with any games at all? Oh, it's built in. Oh. Well, I didn't see that. You know what? I don't hate the design. I'm coming around on this thing. How the fuck did you turn it on? Oh, turn it on. Yeah. Better screen, better sound, pre-installed Capcom games, more internal memory, Tate mode. Oh. I think that's vertical. TV out or something. Yeah, it's got HDMI on top. Yeah, it's just a straight up like mini HDMI. <clears throat> kind of looks like the Retroid Pocket. Yeah. Can, can you hack it? Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Mega Man X, 1942, Ghosts and Ghouls, Ghouls and Ghosts. Oh my God, the freaking... Final Fight. Okay, so it's got A, B, X, Y. But then it's got A and B sideways. That's, That's kind of cool. I was talking I know, but you that. didn't say that. You didn't say hey, sideways A and B. All right, I think I'm coming around <clears throat> on this thing. Okay. It's got art type. That's what I was playing. Do you think I listen to you? No. I, I know you don't listen to Capcom me. Capcom Collection. 1942. Okay, does it have Street Fighter? Mega Man! Megan Man! Megan Man X! Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. Which one's the Street Fighter game that people actually like? Turbo? Okay. I think it's Turbo. Because <laughs> that was the one they did the HG remix for a while back. Mm, uh, there are a shit ton of classic game collection cards for it. Some are great, some are trash, but there's good variety. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Because like, there's a wide variety of like cartridge cartridges for it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's an Atari collection. What, what when I know? looked into it, it whoa. When I looked into it, it didn't look that good. The 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 cartridges that I saw. I mean, it's been a while, but when I looked yeah. into it. I wasn't interested in any of the cartridges. There's an Atari collection. There's a Double Dragon collection. There's a Burger Time collection. There's a Commodore 64 collection. Maybe I was interested in this because it had Mega Man X, and that's literally the. Only Maybe you were interested in it because it can play Chips Challenge. You can get a cartridge with Chips Challenge on it. Does this one have that cartridge? No, of course not. <laughs> I gotta get the Chips Challenge cartridge now. How much are the cartridges? I don't think they're expensive. And can you get a cartridge <coughs> that is an SD card? And can I just put ROMs on it? I know you can get, you can actually get a console version that you can plug the cartridges into and play it on the TV. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. $20 a cartridge, the chat's saying. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ray Danny, for the nine month subscription. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we're done. We, we're, we're over time here. Okay. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, a youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, you guys are going to go watch my friend Obanat Suits. He is playing... Oh, my God. He's playing World of Warcraft. Just go say hi in his chat. Uh, I'll see you probably Thursday. 
for a live stream. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all later. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye. What's my buy button? Is it this? Okay.